Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gilman School here in Baltimore, Maryland at Alexander Sotir Stadium. I am Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein and Mac Webster, ready to bring you this matchup between the Good Council Falcons and the Gilman Greyhounds. And a beautiful day for some high school football here. A great afternoon in Baltimore, Maryland. And Nathan, this Gilman team is riled up and ready for a win. Oh, yeah, they have to be, Julian, after that uh, loss they took away uh, down in West Virginia. It wasn't a pretty one. Uh, and certainly the coaches and staff has been on them all practice this week, getting them ready for this game. So I think you go out here really excited to win. Uh, you definitely want to compete, and I think we're going to see some good football from these guys. Absolutely. And, Mac, last week the uh, Good Council Falcons ran for 133 yards and 26 carries against Archbishop Spaulding. What does the Gilman defensive front need to do to stop this run here today and make sure that a repeat of last game does not happen for these Falcons? Well, uh, the Greyhounds need to get in the backfield quick today. If, uh, if the Good Council offensive line is able to assert their dominance, it's going to be a long one. For the owner of a green Toyota and now Islander, we take to the field as we get ready for the coin toss as PA announcer Dan Christian insists that the owner of a Toyota, a green Toyota in fact, goes to move his car because it's blocking something. He does a phenomenal job. He really does. He's fantastic. I've never, he's, he's everywhere. He is. He's always announcing everything. So down on the field right now, the captains for Gilman, number 12, Zach Jones, accompanied by Will Weinfeld as well as number 32, Antonio DeCerbo, and, and number five, Drew Ehrlich. At Alexander Sotir Stadium on the campus of Gilman School for today's game between the visitors and our guests, the Good Council Falcons. Coach, of course, we'd like to welcome Boyd, everybody joining us the from both the Gilman community the Gilman and coach, Good Dr. Council. Tim as we get ready for the coin toss here. And we have completed the coin toss here. Waiting for the official word. Would everyone please rise? As we get set here for the national anthem at Gilman School, we turn it over to PA announcer Dan Christian. Now we are set for some football here at Gilman School after that national anthem, the rendition by the United States Marine Corps. Gilman looking fired up on their sideline. Of course, as you said, Nathan, they were shellacked when they traveled down to Virginia Beach last week. They lost 50-7. to That was really a demoralizing loss for this Gilman team, but they're 1-1 one one now after their uh, win against Dunbar that we covered at the beginning of the season. They'd like to come out of this game with a winning record. No, definitely. I think it's, it's really important that you uh, start off the season as they have been uh, for the most part successfully and so getting up on these guys really early is going to be key to this game uh, and so the special teams play is going to be really important when you talk about field position and uh, it's going to be um, the key of this game is going to be moving the ball down the field and getting in scoring range. And one thing you might have noticed there Julian 
is um, they had one of their players, I think it was number 53, uh, kneeling down during the uh, national anthem, and you see that uh, happening in the pros, Colin Kaepernick's protest. It's spilling over into high school football, and, uh, you know, it's just interesting to see the effect that has, the grand effect on uh, all sports. That's right. Certainly a point of controversy over the past few weeks all over the country about kneeling or sitting during the national anthem in protest of certain things going on in the country. As Brandon Willis and Brandon Madison are back deep to return for Gilman, and we're about to get underway here at Gilman School. And the kickoff, it's a high one, going to land somewhere on the 10 yard line, fielded by Brandon Madison. Madison going up the middle of the field, covers the ball, trying to get through the pile, but he will not as he's across the 25 yard line down to the 26 or 27, and Gilman will set up for its first drive. And Nathan, we saw a lot of impressive things out of junior quarterback Pernell Hill in the first game of the season against Dunbar. Let's hope that he can be the dual threat that everybody's expecting both on the ground and through the air. Yeah, no, we saw some rifle passes uh, in the game that we covered at Dunbar. He throws the ball really hard. Uh, it's a really smooth delivery, and it looks really nice. As a quarterback, you'd like the guy to be able to basically put the ball really, really hard in between tight spaces, and that's what he does really well. So first play of the game, Pernell Hill is under center. Behind him is Brandon Madison, the receiver on the near side. That is Allende Watson, the senior. Brunel Hill takes the snap, and he hands it off to Brandon Madison. Madison stuffed for either a gain of nothing or a gain of one. Now what you might have saw there was Thomas Booker kind of continuing to do the uh, motion steps there as to not stop and cause a penalty. So when they, when they pull guys over there, they have to stay in motion. They can't come to a complete stop or it's, um, it's going to be a foul. So he kept, he kept his feet chopping there, and then they handed the ball off. And uh, not a good game, but certainly you know, to start the tempo off smooth here. Checking into the game on the near side, wide receiver number four, Brandon Willis. Hill back to pass. He lops it over to the near side. There's a flag out as it may have been intercepted by good counsel. Let's see what the call is here. It may have been some holding or interference. Look, looked like that was uh, Noah Nicholson, the uh, senior quarter, cornerback on the, on the penalty there. Waiting for the official call. Certainly something that will negate the incompletion slash interception. It's going to be pass interference. Pass interference against You're right, Nathan. Nathan. Pass interference, that'll be a fresh set of downs for the Gilman Greyhounds as they'll move it up, I believe, 15 yards in high school. I calls them like I see them, Julian. That's right. Nathan, uh, the most insightful man on now this uh, ball, this crew ten. here. Sorry, Matt. No, I, 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 we I, certainly I, we pale in comparison to your intelligence. Is really what it comes down to. <laughs> I'm not trying to gloat here. I'm just just saying. Yeah, you are. I gotta take <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta take my shots when I can. Brunell Hill, talking to his offensive line as Gilman has a first down and ten from their own 42 yard line. A back to the right of Brunell Hill in motion is Brandon Willis. Takes the snap, immediately starts rolling out, and it's a shovel pass, uh -oh. but it's incomplete. That was a forward pass. They cannot call that a fumble. Incompletion, the uh, the sign from the near referee, and that's a good call. That was a forward shovel pass. That's something you see quite a bit in the NFL, and that's a good job from Tim Holly implementing a professional play style into this high school team. That looked like that was Kevon Bowen, number 68, in on the backfield. He's a, uh, he's a big guy out there at 6'4", 325. Good point. They have a lot of really large guys in their D-line and O-line. It's going to be tough for Gilman to overcome the sheer size differential, and that'll be one of the key points of this one. Second down and 10. Noah Nicholson, the corner on the near side for good counsel. The handoff to Brandon Madison. Madison getting around the edge, and he has a gain of about four or five Brandon yards. Madison, the ball you know, those runs aren't going to be the... Big highlight runs, but uh, they definitely start off your drive, and you want to keep the uh, the gears shifting here early on. You want to keep shucking away, getting like three, four yards, and really it sets up those longer runs later in the game. Third down and seven with about 10.50 to go here in the first quarter. Brandon Willis is the receiver on the near side alongside Allende Watson in the slot. Pistol formation here for Gilman. Behind Purnell Hill is Brandon Madison. Purnell Hill rolling out. He's going to throw this one completed to Brandon Willis, and that'll be a first down for Gilman as he moves the chains just across the first down marker. First down and 10 coming up. It's a great way for Purnell Hill to get, uh, get his day going with a nice completion for a first down. First down, Gilman. And that just shows, Nathan, that Purnell Hill has the ability to roll out, set his feet in a short amount of time, and make a bullet throw even while on the run. Yeah, no, that's the thing you won't see out of most high school quarterbacks, the ability to stop and complete a uh, short pass like that, but he's definitely good at it, and that uh, shows some uh, light for this Gilman offense. Good counsel showing press. 
Two wide receivers on the far side. Purnell Hill with a back to his left. He takes the snap. Back to pass. He's going to throw over the middle. And going up to get it is Allende Watson. Taken down just short of the, the 35-yard line. Allende Watson going vertical for that one. Great play from the senior wide receiver. That was a, that was a great catch right there. And uh, it's tough to go up in coverage like that. You're going to get hit most of the time. It shows a lot of bravery. It shows a lot of confidence as an ability to go out and get that ball. And uh, that's why they like him out there in the slot. A huge Gilman student section here today. Looks like fullback uh, freshman or junior Bryce Bush has just checked into the game. Looks like the uh, Hounds are going to have a run play here, maybe play action. So the offset eye formation for the Hounds, they're going to hand this one off. No, they're not. Play action. And as he's getting taken down, throws this one away, Purnell Hill. Showing great awareness there, uh, throwing it towards the fullback, as not to uh, get a, um, a, a penalty on that for uh, throwing it just away. He did a good job, you know, rolling out of the pocket when pressure came through there. And he uh, saved a broken play right there. That was a good job by the quarterback. So second down and 10 here. Purnell Hill getting the call from the sideline. Thomas Booker in the game. He'll be tight end on the left side of the offensive line. So now we're in the I formation. Second down and 10. Purnell Hill, he hands this one off to the fullback, and he dives forward. Looked like a fullback dive, a fake halfback sweep there. That's a good play call. It uh, keeps the defensive ends on guard. They can't just crash in at that fullback. They have to at least honor the pitch attempt there, and uh, a good job trying to sneak a couple yards in there with a fullback dive. So now Gilman faces third down, third down and seven yards. Owls are checking into the slot on the left side. Uh, they like to use him on these quick passes. We'll see what they do here. Of course, Wade Owsler's brother TJ, a star for this Gilman football team a few years ago. Third down and seven. Purnell Hill takes the snap and he'll hand it off up the middle. And it will be a gain of about two or three yards. That's a, down coming up. an interesting call right there because, you know, they needed a lot of yards. Uh, and you assume they'd go over to the air. And I guess what the offensive coordinator was trying to do is catch them in maybe a dime set or a quarter defense and uh, hope he can sneak a couple yards there instead of a fourth and short. And it looks to me like they are going to take a risk early on and go for it. I, I guess that head coach Tim Holly considered this th uh, four down territory. I was certainly surprised by the call. But regardless, it's fourth down and five. Purnell Hill with a back to his right. That's Brandon Madison. Back to passes Hill, looking for an open receiver. He goes over the middle, and it's intercepted by good counsel. Going after him is Brandon Willis, but down the sideline he goes after being pushed out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Good counsel gets the interception. Yeah, and it was a fourth down territory, so you can excuse a pass that he tried to force in there, but really he was double covered, uh, the man he was trying to throw to, and uh, an easy interception for good counsel. And they're going to set up in good field position as uh, Gilman tried to go for it instead of punting them back. Uh, so, you know, exactly where you want to start the drive, and um, they're going to be uh, looking to march into this Gilman territory and possibly set up a, a field goal or a score here early. It was the linebacker, Anthony Gorgon, for good counsel with the interception, and they will set up their offense for the first time today. The quarterback in the field is number 12, Travis Nannan. Lineup in the I formation. Man in motion is number 10, Jonathan Dinelli. Handoff up the middle, looking for some room as he powers through the Gilman defensive front. Looked like his helmet came off there. He's going to have to come out for the next play. Let's see how many yards they do give him on this. Ball carrier, number one, for good counsel, Mohammed. Yes, that's Abu Mohammed Ibrahim Abu on the carry for good counsel. The senior. And Nannan under center. He will hand this one off once again, and this one to number five of good counsel. He'll be taken out in the backfield. That was Tremont Stott on the carry. Great, great tackle there by Rob Levine, able to get in the backfield and stop that run before it uh, broke out wide. So Stott couldn't find any room, and now it's a third, third down five. and five coming up for good counsel with five, excuse me, 7.53 to go in the first quarter. Nannan lined up in the I formation. He's got two wide receivers split out. And Nannan will hand this one off up the middle, but Gilman says no to that attempted truck by the running back. Looks like Piper Bond is going back deep to return along with Wade Owsley. Ball carrier, ball carrier number one, Mohammed Ibrahim. So number 42, GT, GT, J, excuse me, JT Mitchell 
the uh, the punter Michael for good counsel. Good start by Gilman, getting him into four down territory and forcing the turnover. Mitchell gets it and gets it off. This one back to the 20-yard line. Oh, take a good pick. bounce for Gilman. Excuse me, for good counsel. And it'll be down right at the one-yard line. It looks like maybe just a little bit away from that in the three-yard line, perhaps. So a great kick from Mitchell. Right now, good counsel winning the field position battle as Gilman's backed up deep. They're going to have to try to force the ball into some um, so a little bit more breathing room here, allowing a drop back pass. So I'd see Gilman probably going early on with the inside run, trying to pick up a couple yards before setting up their offense here. And it's really difficult to do that, especially when you're trying to dry. That's like about 90 yards, and uh, they're, they're not easy if the defense is playing stout. So Gilman's offense stepping back onto the field here. Good counsel really switched to the field position right there. Uh, Hounds were looking to get the ball back around their 20. Instead, they let the punt go, and now they're back inside their five. Burnell Hill and his backs backed up into their own end zone. Lined up in the eye formation. Good counsel expecting a run. Linebackers showing blitz. And Burnell Hill will power forward himself, just trying to get out of the cramped territory, and it looks like he'll pick up a few yards on the play. Yeah, and Julian, he uh, tried to get him off sides with a, uh, the fake hike, the delayed snap, and a good job by him uh, trying to keep the defense off their toes and then hiking it, uh, taking them by surprise and able to pick up a couple yards there. That's exactly what you want to do on uh, first down when you're pinned back. Looks like we have an uh, injury timeout. Kevon Bowen, the big defensive lineman, is down injured. Looks like training staff uh, from good counsel is out on the field to attend to him at the moment. Yes, uh... Training staff out to attend to Bowen on the field. Glad to have all of you with us here on Greyhound TV. I am Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein. Mac Webster's out of your shop. He's right down, down there. He can't really see him. Uh, it'll be second down and seven coming up for Gilman here. You gotta, you gotta earn your stripes, Julian. You gotta, yeah, that's where yeah, everyone starts. They sit down in the uh, the lower tier down there. But uh, that's right. Only the seniors are allowed oh, yeah. up here, Nathan. Uh, Only the seniors. We're extremely yeah. Pro senior here. Sorry about that. You can't see Mac's wonderful face, but you can hear his wonderful voice. Isn't that right, Mac? Yes, it is, Julian. <laughs> As we uh, have 6:44 to go in the first quarter here at Gilman School, and uh, Bowen is being helped off the field by the training staff of Good Counsel. He's a big boy out there. I can tell you that. Yeah, he is a big part of that linebacking core for Good Counsel. It's a shame to see him go. Yeah, at least he's able. It looks like he's able to walk off the field. Um, in good shape. Uh, you like to see that. You don't like to see him being carried off. Um, so, you know, it's a good, good thing the injury wasn't worse than uh, what you could initially see. He was writhing in pain for a little bit. That's right. But now the good counsel defense coming back onto the field, a second down and seven for Gilman, as Purnell Hill leads his offense back onto the field for the Greyhounds. Of course, glad to have all of you with us here on Greyhound TV. If you're watching from good counsel or if you're a fan of good counsel, we're glad to have you along board here today with 6.44 to go in the first quarter. We welcome all comers here, Julian. That's right. Everybody that's tuning in, we're glad to have you. We value every single viewer, as cliche as that is. Yeah. If you just happen to stumble along and you're looking for cat videos, welcome. <laughs> exactly. Brunel Hill back to pass in his own end zone. And he'll lob this oh, one high he airs in the this air. one out. Brandon Willis gets pulled back, and he is incomplete there. Looking for the pass interference call there, but a ref says no, it was clean. There was a little bit of a... Tic tac bump, but uh, you, know, you don't like to call those every time. It was um, it was definitely a play that was able to make on the you know, part of Gilman. Yes, number 21 uh, on the coverage there. That was Noah Nicholson for good counsel, and we have a third down and seven coming up. Hounds are really going to try and get a first down here to give themselves some breathing room or at least move forward so that their punter isn't standing in the end zone. Purnell Hill with a back to his right and a back behind him. He will. Hand this ball off to Brandon Madison. Madison gets around tackles. Brandon Madison stays on his feet, but he looks like he is a little bit short, perhaps. No, I think no, he's he got, got it. it. He's, he's got, got it. it. He's got it. As the official on the far side signals that he is well ahead of the first down marker. It's a great call by Gilman with the sweep there. He caught him off guard. The DNs were slacking in, and that's exactly what you want. A nice run play that sets up a first down and puts you with some breathing room. So a first down and 10 for Gilman here, Purnell Hill. Handed it off to uh, Brandon Madison on the pass play. And Brandon Madison, just such a physical and elusive runner. Good uh, counsel's going to have to work all day to wrap up on him. He does a lot of things. He can also run out there and catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, he's quick. He's powerful. He's exactly what you want in a running back. 
So here's a handoff on an end around to Zach Jones, and Jones, the senior, powering forward. He looks to have a gain of about four or five yards. And of course, Zach Jones, not the tallest guy you'll see out there, but certainly just as athletic as everybody on the field. He knows how to make plays and get around defenders. Yeah, it's all a big, uh, big elusiveness right there. He's uh, hard to bring down because he's so shifty. And uh, he can hide behind those big offensive linemen. It's hard to see him. And then uh, by the time you do see him, it's a little bit too late as he'll be running by you. Gilman running a three wide receiver set on the far side. Purnell Hill lined up with a shotgun, a blitz coming, and a quick pass out to Zach Jones. And Jones is stuffed at the line of scrimmage by this good council secondary. They read that perfectly, and there was nowhere to go. Yeah, it was a good attempt on that screen there. He had two blockers, but the uh, good council team spotted that one quickly and uh, right away wrapped him up for a loss of a bit. Correction, loss of four on the play. is third and a long nine. So third down and nine for Gilman. As good counsel was able to get to Zach Jones back around the initial line of scrimmage. You're going to be looking to pass here unless they're considering it as four down territory, which I assume they aren't. That would be uh, that'd be very bold, but also very foolish. I doubt they're doing that. tragic, Cotton. Purnell Hill under pressure. He's going to let this one go, and it's incomplete in the vicinity of Thomas Booker. And uh, fourth down coming up. You'll assume Gilman's going to punt here unless they're feeling extra ambitious down, here today, nine. Nathan. Uh, maybe, maybe stupid, Julian, is a better <laughs> term for that as, as opposed to ambitious. But yeah, it looks like they're going to punt. I think backed up here in, um, in a bad situation on fourth and long. Yeah, there's counter. no other call but the punt there. So the sun number has started five, to beat down here at Gilman School. We're certainly feeling seven, the heat up here in the booth, but I think Gilman's feeling the heat from this good council defensive front as they are not able to get past them to pick up the first on that drive, and they're forced to punt in their own territory. And right now it's been uh, nothing but a defensive battle and uh, no, no big highlights from this first quarter. It's just been back and forth, a game of field position, but it's a game good counts is winning right now. The punt is up. It's a high punt. It goes down around the 40-yard line, fielded by good counsel. So they will start inside Gilman territory around the 40-yard line after that hanging the punt. for good counsel, number five, Tremaine Scott. Yes, number good five, Tremaine, Tremaine Scott. The fielder there. It's a tough punt for Drew Ehrlich as he's into the wind. Uh, I wonder whether that was uh, any impact in the coin toss, whether uh, teams were working with or without the wind. Yes, of course, the wind will be a factor here today. It's a little bit breezy, as you can tell by the uh, the flags at the top of the goalposts. Mm. It is a nice breeze, you know, a little bit hot. Cools you off a bit, but I'm sure the, the kickers don't appreciate it. So Nannan hands it off to the man on the end around. That was number 19, Joey Felton. He'll gain about two yards. Running the sweep for good counsel number 19, Joey Felton. Gain of three on the play, second and seven. And if you're good counsel here, you have an opportunity inside of Gilman's territory. You really want to capitalize as they're about to line up on the near hash mark. Take advantage of the fact that this Gilman defense doesn't have a lot of room to work with. Nannan, quick pass over towards the far side and trying to get around Gilman defenders. Getting an edge, maybe a little bit, but eventually taken down. Pass complete to number 10. We've been seeing a lot of uh, quick passes Jonathan and uh, running Bradley. plays here. Nothing, no big shots have uh, been successful. They're not really trying to stretch the field, but I assume the as the game comes on, uh, more chances down the field uh, will occur and we'll see teams starting to air it out with a more vertical offense, uh, maybe perhaps in the second half. This is a big play for the uh, Greyhound defense. Third and three uh, inside uh, inside their uh, their field position. Nannan lined up under center with two backs behind him in the I formation. He's going to hand it off to number one, who goes forward and finds a hole. Getting around Gilman defenders all the way for a touchdown is Muhammad Ibrahim. And good counsel goes up first here. It's six to nothing. Uh, we saw some great acceleration by him. Uh, he broke that plane, and it was gone. I, I could tell by the time he reached about the 15-yard line, he had such a head of steam on him that no one was going to be able to bring him down. The blocking by the receiver on the right side was perfect. Uh, forced him in and allowed uh, the runner a little bit room to the outside, and the dive in just uh, capped off a beautiful run. Uh, by good counsel. Just as I said, there wasn't any big plays, Julian. You proved me wrong right there. That's right. You are the uh, you're the jinx, Nathan. But the uh, the only problem is that wasn't a jinx that's favoring Gilman. So yeah. we're gonna blame that one no, on you. It was my fault. I, I completely agree with that. Yes, Muhammad Ibrahim had a hole and he took advantage of it. As there were some Gilman defenders in his way, but he said no to them, throwing out a stiff arm and then eventually finding the edge. And this kick is up and it is good from number 42, J T Mitchell. And Good Council has a 7-0 lead with 3.02 to go in the first quarter. So good start by Good Council. They won the field position battle early on. 
it was a lot easier for them to drive inside their 40 as opposed to Gilman inside their own 10. Or excuse me, in Gilman's 40. Um, so, you know, right now, uh, things going for good counsel's favor. Gilman right now, to stay in this game, needs to respond back and respond quickly here as the uh, first quarter winds down with this drive. And this drive certainly uh, will set the tone for the rest of the uh, second half. And, of course, good counsel, ranked number two in the Varsity Sports Network poll of Maryland high school football teams. So they certainly are coming in here with some motivation. They have gotten their accolades for this team this year. They know they're good. Now they're just trying to show it. And Gilman's trying to show them that they're just as good as Purnell Hill is going to come back onto the field here and hopefully keep a cool, collected stance, knock him out here with a head of steam, and make sure that he can lead this team professionally and accurately. 7-0 good counsel. Looks like a new kicker for the uh, Falcons. Looks like Mauro Cavallari. Fielded by Brandon Madison. Madison almost found a hole to break through, but he's down around the 40-yard line. Uh, he was whistled down. Ball came out after the Number whistle was three. blown. Number three, Brandon Madison, Gilman ball. So Five Gilman will ten. set up with good field position here as Brandon Madison was able to get Gilman to the 40-yard line or just about that the lineup of the 39. I'd like to thank all of our producers today. John Ball, our executive producer, accompanied by Jack Olson, Rhett Dawson, Cole Vincent, and Anish Sood, who may or may not be here. I don't know. He's under us. I know he was running late, but if you're here, Anish, we, we, we recognize you. Yes. A L- little upset showing up late, Anish. Perhaps we need to scold him later. Yeah, well, I will definitely give him a good, uh, good verbal lashing. Rightfully so, as... Zach Jones is lined up on the near side. Purnell Hill flanked by backs, one to his right, one to his left, and he will have a quick pass over towards the near side. This Owsler one to in the, in the f- Wade Owsler. And down to the 50-yard line, Owsler has a first down. Good play in the flash there. We saw another player kind of bump into him, and, and Owsler showed a little bit of a temper there and pushed him off. He's a really emotional player, and he does a great job. Uh, you know, just kind of shoving off players and, and being that aggressive uh, firepower we see on the lacrosse field, Jordan. He does it uh, there, too. Uh, just a great emotional player, and you like to see that kind of um, enthusiasm from your guys. So now Gilman. They were just short on the previous play. Second down and one. Pernell Hill waiting for the snap and the pistol. He'll take the snap, and he will hand it off to the back up the middle. And it looks like... Waiting for an official spot. On the carry, he ha- should have the first the down. Number 11, that was Mason number Freeman. 11, Mason Freeman. Third down and a short one. The junior. So now they're calling it third down at one, Nathan. It looked to me like he had the first down there, but... Well, you know, Julian, that's because uh, you're extremely biased. That's, that <laughs> that's right, yeah. that's right. No, no, that's, that's a, I guess it's a good call. You know, it could go either way. It's, it's tough out there for these officials. Willis in motion, taking the snap is Brandon Madison. He's Madison getting around defenders, and he's got the first down or just close. Let's see where they spot it. Julian, I'm showing some of my bias and saying he's got it right here. It really looked like he had it, but they just flipped it to the fourth down sign. Let's see if they bring out the chains. Now, I'm an aggressive guy, Julian, and uh, you know, I think you know that more than uh, anyone else, but I, I'd say they go for it here. Yes, of course, when Nathan isn't doing Greyhound TV, everybody knows him to be extremely bossy wherever he yes. goes. He's always the one calling the shots, Throwing but not here. Around. Not here. That's what I'm good for, Julian. This is his good persona. Yes. Outside of this, nobody, no, you, nobody out there, you don't no, want to know him. No, I'm just an awful person outside of the booth. So they're bringing the chains out. Let's see what happens. I get angry, Julian. I like to have my way. Like a frustrated toddler. And let's see where they've got it. Give it to him. They really should give it to him. I think they're still short since they're moving the chains back out to the middle. And it looks to me like yep. he's going to be short. Just a, just a hair short, Julian. Oh, my goodness. That's about as close as it gets right there. It's a close shave. So the question here is... Do you run maybe a quarterback dive and try and get this? I, I, it's going to be tough because their defense line is so much bigger uh, than the Gilman offensive line, and a short pass is risky here. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what they call it. You know, I say you have to go for it in this situation. And they're going to with 121 to go in the first quarter. Gilman facing a fourth down in inches. <laughs> Lined up in a heavy back set. It's when you pull your trick plays out. Willis in motion, and they're going to hand it off up the middle, got and it. he's got the first down. Great play there as they fake the end around and hand it off up the middle, and they've got it. Yeah, that was a great call by the offensive coordinator, a tricksy play 
Uh, you know, that's why you draw one of those up. Uh, for a situation like this, you need to get the first down, Number and so you fake Number him out. Uh, nice hold Rob developed. Devine. The offense line did a good job uh, separating uh, the defense lineman, and uh, that's textbook right there. The senior Rob Levine on the carry. Of course, playing both running back and defensive back. We saw Rob Levine last year in the secondary doing great things for Gilman. As it's first down and 10. With under a minute to go in the first quarter, Purnell Hill lines up in the I formation. And he will keep this one. Roll out on a play action pass. Looking for a man to go to. He'll oh. lob it deep downfield. And it's almost intercepted out of bounds. So the clock will stop on the incompletion with 36 seconds left in the first quarter, second down and 10. It's funny, so the good Cows and cheerleaders thought he intercepted it and they were jumping around, you know, going crazy. It's so sad to see them and their enthusiasm <laughs> immediately turned to like, oh, you know. Uh, it, it was close, it was close. Yeah, it was a close play. Purnell took a big nine, shot right there and um, that's not something you like to see. You don't like the quarterback getting hit, uh, especially right to the head. That looked like one of those Cam Newton hits, um, but it, well, that did look clean. Um, I'm sure it's going to affect his game a little bit. We hope he shakes it off and uh, continues to play well. Yeah, Purnell Hill, of course, uh, with the strong arm. Everybody knows it, and he's showing it right there. He can get it downfield even when he's on the run. A low snap, and he'll hand this one off up the middle. Good counsel swarming. A gain of maybe two yards. Third down and perhaps eight to go with 26 seconds left in the first oh, quarter. Hey, Gilman Gilman may let this just run out. Number three, Brandon Madison. So we're down to 15 seconds here in the first quarter. Maybe they'll get one more play in. Are we going to rush it here? Yeah, they're going to send out their personnel with five seconds left. Purnell Hill in the shotgun. I don't think they're going to get it off. Yeah, snap it. Got, they're not doing it. It looks smart because now they have uh, now they've got a timeout where they can talk about what they want to run here on this uh, critical third down. Score, Absolutely, it makes sense to take this time to devote to one. picking up a third down conversion it's when you're down seven. a score. No, I agree completely. Uh, a, a great call. You know, you just you just want to think about it a little bit more and uh, consider running another play. You know, Julian, I've really enjoyed my experience here at Gilman. It's uh, been a good tenure these four years, and you know, I, I think to when I, I came here, you know, uh, going to um, open house and choosing my school. Um, so if, if you're interested in sending your son to Gilman, you can get a gem start on the 2000, 2017, 2018 uh, academic year by visiting Gilman this fall. So select the time of day or the type of event that best suits your schedule, and you can go to gilman.edu slash fall visits for details. Now, Nathan, I can tell you that uh, I don't know if I even really remember the uh, my open house. I came here in first grade. Yeah, I've been no, here you, for 12 years. You're but a lifer. I do remember I do remember my first day at Gilman and it was certainly special. So anybody out there that's thinking about sending their sons to Gilman, this is uh, this is a fantastic place to go. No, it's a, it's a great place. Um, a beautiful establishment. The campus looks nice as you can probably see from uh, Jack Olson's uh, good view he's given you there. Yes, Jack Olson, our producer. Yes, our producer. Yes. Um, and, you know, it's just a great place where people are really nice and they really do care about your success. And they um, do. I, I'm glad I chose here over any other high school. Um, it's definitely turned out the better for me, and I hope it does turn out better for uh, your son if you choose to send him there. Absolutely. Gilman always works in our favor. The teachers always helpful, always friendly, ready to help whenever you need them. So third down and eight with a fresh 12 minutes on the clock for the second quarter. Purnell Hill lined up with a back to his right. We switch sides here. Man in motion is Piper Bond. They'll fake the handoff to Bond and they dump off to Brandon Madison who has blockers. Brandon Madison getting around defenders. Brandon Madison has the first down as he gets across the 40 yard line and into, uh, further into rather, good council territory. Great play by Brandon Madison. He is elusive, isn't he, Mac? That's a, yeah, that's a that's another third down conversion for Brandon Madison. He's, he's really been the go-to so far on third down. He's a very elusive player. Got to assume that a good council is going to target him in future third down situations as he's been extremely reliable for this Gilman offense and creating yards. Lineup of the pistol set with first down and 10, Thomas Booker into block. And back to pass is Purnell Hill rolling out under pressure, getting away from defenders. Hill will fire this one incomplete, intended for Piper Bond, who was coming back to get it. Second down and 10 coming up here. Purnell Hill really has a great ability of getting out of the pocket, and even if a play's broken, he's not going to get sacked. He's not going to get called for intentional grounding. He's going to find a player to just shoot it in the vicinity of, and he's going to do it. Yeah, that's a very veteran move right there. You don't see uh, guys, especially at the high school level, able to you know, dodge pressure that well and at least get rid of the ball and, and not get that intentional grounding penalty. He does that so well. Uh, we've seen him do it a few times so far today, and uh, we'll continue to see him do it, but it's one of the key features of his game. He's a smart player as well as a very athletic player. So Purnell Hill... Second down and 10. 
quick pass over towards the far side. Piper yes. Bond has room. Piper Bond going down the far side gets taken down from behind. Almost had room to go all the way to the end zone. Piper Bond, the junior, showing that he's got the speed, he's got the hands, and it's a first down for Gilman. Good catch and run there. Uh, you know, he's found the whole opening. It was uh, a good call because they saw that they weren't paying much attention over to the right side, and you catch him off guard with those quick passes, and that's exactly what happened right there. For Gilman parents only, don't miss the parent welcoming reception on Friday, October 7th. Find your welcoming party venue and register at gilman.edu slash parent welcoming. Looks like the Hounds are actually going to wildcat formation. Pernell Hill came out of the game. Here's Brandon Madison trying to find room on the near side. He'll be taken down. I think that was Brandon Willis. Excuse me, yes, Brandon Willis. We got two Brandons. Yeah. Yes. Of course, number three and number four. Number three is Brandon Madison. Number four is Brandon Willis. Thank you, Mac. You're welcome. <laughs> That's why we have him around. That's right. That is right. So the Gilman student section getting riled up as Gilman has entered the red zone. Second down and six. Wildcat again. Here's Brandon Madison lined up to get the snap. And he's going to fake the handoff. He's going to take it himself. Brandon Madison finding room. And down to the five-yard line. Brandon Madison showing that he, again, has the elusiveness that everybody talks about. Getting to the five-yard line. Getting around a defender. Getting around two defenders, in fact. First down and ten. First down and goal, rather. Yeah, it looks like a player is down for Gilman. Uh, I guess we'll take a moment now. The um, official timeout as they're tending to him. He kind of just collapsed. I think it was probably uh, an injury that he sustained during the play. Yes. And it, it, it just I guess they just told him to fall over. Um, and we hope it's not anything it's serious. It didn't look like anything serious. But Gilman right now, Julian, the first uh, chance they've had at putting actual points on the board. It's, it's a crucial situation now. you got first and goal. Uh, what do you think they're going to look for uh, early on in this, uh, this uh, red zone opportunity? Well, first and goal, we know that Tim Holly really likes to run a heavy back set. So I wouldn't be surprised if we continued to see the Wildcat formation yeah. come on here. Brandon Agreed. Madison getting a direct snaps. Brandon Willis coming around on end arounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe Zach Jones as well. He loves to do that with his speedy guys. He knows that they have the ability to get around the edge. All they need is a little bit of blocking. Yeah, Just, it's all, it's all going to come down to that offense line. As we mentioned, they uh, could counsel uh, D-line is a lot of... Uh, a lot more big, bigger, a lot more physical uh, than the Gilman O-line, so it's all going to be the push that they're going to have to generate. That's what's going to uh, win them a score here. And some interesting tidbits about the good counsel head coach. This is actually his 45th year of coaching football. He's certainly an experienced veteran head coach as being helped off the field here is the Gilman injured player. Uh, that was, that is rather, number, number 50, Zach Franks. He is a sophomore. Yeah, and uh, another tidbit, uh, it's been 45 years, as you said. It's also, he won his 400th game uh, last week uh, in the matchup. I think it was against Spalding, if I'm correct. Yes, it was against Spalding. And, that, uh, was the, that was the game that uh, the Falcons' rushing attack really just attacked Archbishop Spalding. So he definitely has a nice pedigree, and uh, we'll see the uh, brilliance and all the things he's learned over his 45-year career. Hounds are, uh, back in this the, game. Hounds are back in the Wildcat. And Brandon Madison takes the snap, and he'll be pummeled right around the five-yard line, six-yard line. And there you go, Nathan. My prediction came true. They're lined up in yeah. the Wildcat once again. Good call. Hey, that's uh, – now, now you're getting cocky on me, Julian. Hey, you know, I don't want to take – You accuse me of being cocky, and now here's you rubbing it in that you've got something right. Yeah, I don't want to take too don't much credit, yourself. But, but go ahead and let me gloat, Nathan. Oh, okay, go ahead fine. and let me gloat. We all know your time in the limelight. Yes. Yes, we do. That's why we're broadcasting, Nathan, yeah, so everybody can hear us. This just, is about us. This is all about me. This is all about us. So line up in the game's just a formality. Lined up in the Wildcat once again, Brandon Madison, the end around from Brandon Willis, and they'll hand it off up the middle to Rob Levine, and good counsel snuff that out. So I'd imagine they're going to put Purnell Hill back in on third down and five, third down and goal. Yeah, it looks like now they're in a pass situation. The two runs uh, did nothing to increase uh, their odds of putting uh, points on the board here. So now it's uh, do or die on this third down. Um, you know, it's going to be, it, it might be four down territory if they really deem the uh, touchdown worthy right now. I'd say the same bet would just let uh, Daryl Mondala come out here and kick a nice easy field goal to put points on the board. One thing you just got to remember about the Wildcat formation, it enables you to have a lot better blocking and a lot more capable runners, but it is predictable. Rolling out is Purnell Hill, lobbing Aww. it to the end zone, and he had a man there, Brandon Willis. Had some separation, but it was incomplete as it was ahead of the intended receiver. Fourth down and goal. Looks like they're going to kick it. Adara Mandala checking in on the field, number 99. Love the number call by the kicker. You know, usually they go, they'll be like 1 through 10. 99 is the big, the big man coming out here to kick this field goal. That's right. And an ex-soccer player, so he's uh, he's been around. That's what Gilman does. You know, we, we find these guys who play soccer. We had the Vosvik um, That's right. brothers earlier yes. in, uh, when we were freshmen and sophomores, and now we have another soccer player making this big impact on the uh, football field. Adara Mandala lining up. 
And the right-footed kicker sets in. The snap, the hold, and the kick is up, and it's right through the upright. So Gilman gets on the board at 7-3. With 8.57 to go in the second quarter. Glad to have all of you with us here on Greyhound TV. I'm Julian Barron, accompanied by Nathan Heinlein and Matt Webster here in the booth. And of course, big shout outs to all of our producers. First and foremost, our executive producer, John Ball, who really does it all, John Ball. And then, uh, and then Jack Olson, Rhett Dawson with our field camera, and uh, Anish Sood and Cole Vincent on the scoreboard. Great guys that we have up here. You can actually see uh, Jack Olson behind me on the, uh, on the announcer cam. Not sure if we're on that right now. But uh, we certainly value everybody, and, and we really – this is a great organization. Yeah, Jack, at, Jack this is uh, this is our, our limelight right here. So if that's you right. If you, wanna, if you want to move out, yeah, yeah I'd appreciate just, it. We can put up some sort of wall there. But, no, really, this is – we really have to just thank everybody that's part of Greyhound TV that makes this possible. Uh, we've certainly had a – we have an intricate setup versus what we had last year, and it's certainly enabled us to do much, much more. And, of course, if you go to Gilman and you're interested in being part of Greyhound TV, go ahead over to greyhoundtv.org and go to the Apply page where you can sign up to be a producer or an announcer. You can be a 7th grader, you can be an 8th grader, you can be in high school. No matter where you are, we want you because we take care of our own here at Greyhound TV. Yeah, we had some nice donuts before the game, uh, little, little munchkins. We had some muffins. Uh, a few bagels, some coffee to get us riled up and ready for the game. Um, and a big, big thank you to Cesare Kikanti, who uh, is our faculty advisor that does a lot for us. So big, big thank you to him. Yeah. Chris Flynn also helping out early on. We have uh, Rhett Dawson out there manning the camera somewhere. I can't find him yet. He's somewhere out there. He's somewhere. You guys can see his point of view. We cannot. Yeah, I, have, I have no clue what he's doing right now. He might have just wandered off. Who knows? As uh, Dara Mandala lines up to kick it. And this one is a booming kick. Down towards the goal line, fielded. Around the 20 yard line, trying to get around and he's got some room, getting away Breaking from free. Gil. Oh my goodness, still on his feet, down inside Gilman territory. That was number five, unbelievable. Great elusiveness, Tremaine Stott. Yeah, that's exactly what he wanted, a kick returner. He found the hole, the blocking was there and then you had one on one with the kicker. That's not a matchup that the kicker's gonna win most of the time. Adaro just kind of reined him in and allowed other guys to make the tackle, but a good, again, field position is uh, Good Council's uh, right now biggest friend as they've been set up uh, on their side of the 50, or on the friendlier side of the 50, twice, and last time they were, they scored. It's a little bit cliche, but uh, certainly is always a game of field position. And Good Council's got good field position here as they hand it off to the running back on a fake fullback. And getting He's around is home. Ibrahim. Ibrahim taken down inside the 20-yard line, so Good Council on the move inside the red zone already. Gilman's uh, been put on skates a few times this game. Uh, again, slipping up and not able to make a tackle. They have uh, haven't been able to uh, reel guys in, and it's costing them huge yardage. Again, back-to-back -back plays uh, giving up uh, over 20 yards and uh, a little bit more on the kick return. But, you know, Gilman needs to work on their tackling if they want to win this game. Guys have just been getting away, and it's, uh, it's been hurting them in the yardage column. So the 6'4 senior Travis Nannan lined up under center in the I formation. He's the quarterback with two wideouts, and they will hand it off up the middle to the fullback. On the carry for good counsel, number 27, Cameron Taylor. Cameron Taylor on the carry. Second down and seven. Nannan once again lined up in the I formation. And he will keep it himself as the uh, play was broken, and he'll be downed oh, right about the original line of scrimmage. So third down and Number nine or ten quarter coming quarter up. Back. Gilman needs to hold him to a field goal here. A touchdown will put this game uh, on uh, about a two-point or yeah, it's a two-point differential, and that'll just be uh, very uh, difficult to surmount here for Gilman. So they want to keep this uh, within one score, and, and to do that, they have to hold him to a field goal. And Nathan, that's an example of where uh, play smarts really come into factor. Gilman with Tim Holly leading the way. They're always on the same page, but Nannan there not knowing where he's going. He had to fall on the ball in the backfield. And uh, man moved on the Gilman side, and that may be encroachment or a false start. Let's see who it's against. Yes, it's on Gilman, so uh, this will give five free yards to good counsel. As, as the ref makes the official call. It's 
Stop by Station North in the Historic Center D Theater after uh, work on Thursday, September 29th from 5.30 to 7.30 for a special Gilman alumni downtown. Oh, and here we go. We got a runner on the near side <laughs> as they interrupted me. <laughs> and, so, uh, we, we, can, we can talk about that a little later. Yeah, I, th I think that's not a priority now. As uh, it's, it's, That was definitely an important event, and we don't have to say it's not a priority. At this exact moment. At this moment, he's breaking yeah. free, Joe, and you can't, okay, no, no one cares when the guy's running the ball. Yeah. Even though that was only a one-yard gain, uh, didn't realize they were they were taking the ball there. Caught you off guard. They did. They did. Fourth down and four. Sorry. Looks like they're going for it here. Uh, guess they really want to score that touchdown. No, this is a risky call. I would have gone for the field goal easily. You know, that could suggest that they don't have a good field goal kicker that they uh, rely on, just like Dunbar. Uh, Dunbar wasn't, yeah. didn't have anybody to kick the ball. But uh, if, if they do, this is extremely gutsy. It's a fourth and relatively long. They have to have a lot of confidence in this play call. So T formation. They do a sweep to Ibrahim, and Ibrahim is Nothing. taken down in the backfield. Gilman gets the turnover on downs. Huge and stop. They, they negate the big return by good counsel and get the ball back. Surprised good counsel didn't bring in the uh, big bodies from the defensive line if they really wanted that one. Yeah, no, on, on the sweep there, it was a good play call. I can't, can't, can't say it wasn't, uh, but, um, you know, you expect you expect to pick up a little bit more than that, especially if you're uh, in four-down territory. It's very difficult uh, to come through and uh, make that play off of a, a run play. So I, I think they would have been in a much better situation if they had just brought the field kicker out and made it a one-possession game. So the Gilman offense stepping back onto the field, led by junior quarterback Fernell Hill. The Gilman student section certainly getting riled up here as Gilman has the ball back. Fernell Hill lined up in the shotgun, Zach Jones in motion, and they will fake the end around. Fernell Hill will be taken down in the backfield. Let's see what the loss is. Perhaps three yards here. All for Gilman. Second down and 12 coming up. Number two, Cornell Hill. Gilman ball, second 12. And uh, I'm getting word, or at least uh, I heard before the game, that uh, somebody that went to good counsel, I believe, won an Olympic gold medal this year in wrestling. Wow. So uh, good counsel certainly has some names floating around there in, in the big leagues, we like to say, up uh, doing some great things athletically in, uh, in adulthood. Yeah. Olympic gold's nothing to shake a shake a wand at, Julian. A hand off up the middle. Feet. And up the middle to Brandon Madison, and Madison will gain four yards. Number three, running back Brandon Madison. Baltimore's own uh, Michael Phelps. That's right. Also winning uh, just another play, slew of medals. Third down and seven. So third down and about seven or eight yards to go here, with 5:07 left to go in the half. Good counsel. Perhaps trying to call a timeout here. Let's see what they do here. One of their linebackers was signaling to the bench, but I think we'll we'll be okay here. Looks like they're just going to ignore him. Looks like uh, Brandon Madison in there again trying to get that uh, third down conversion. Third down and eight. The handoff to Madison, and Madison will be stuffed. So it's an interesting call there as, let's see, there's some extracurriculars. Did the ball come out, or is he still fighting? It's a lot of fighting that kid, Julian. I think he was just trying to pick up that first down. Uh, against all odds, but uh, a five to one uh, disadvantage isn't gonna win you the uh, first down most of the time. Fourth down coming up here, so Gilman will be forced to punt. It's interesting there, Nathan. Uh, Gilman going with the conservative route, not passing the ball there on that third down situation deep in their own territory. I guess I do understand it when you're down, you don't want to do anything too brash and uh, potentially turn the ball over on a deep pass or a pass that's off the mark. So it certainly makes sense here with time waning in this in the first half. As this is a high punt, looks like he got way under that one. And it'll be fielded fair catch right about the 40-yard line of Gilman. So good counsel gets good field position again. And Nathan, that could be that could be a big deal, giving uh, giving good counsel this good field position. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I would have considered passing in the head off situation. However, it was a safe route, and it could have broken, and he got a first down. Of course, we only uh, shake a finger at the offensive uh, calls when they don't get it. When they do get it, we, we tend not to give them credit for it. But... um. You know, it's they're definitely losing the uh, field position battle. It's been all game this way. You know, good counsel set up the ball uh, inside their, uh, and then the friendlier side of the 50-yard line. While gilman has been pinned back in their own end zone. And that's not that's not how you win games. Travis Nannan, the quarterback, lined up under center in the I formation. They will hand it off to number one Ibrahim, who makes a great move. But then Rob Levine recovers and says, "No, you're not juking me today." As they'll take him down at about the line of scrimmage. Second down and ten coming up. 
Levine's one of the better tacklers on this Gilman defense, and he knows how to wrap guys up. No uh, you're not, you're not getting away from him most of the time. That is a fantastic play by number one, the senior Rob Levine. For a second there, it looked like Ibrahim had him, had him all to himself, but then Rob Levine gets up, grabs Ibrahim, and takes him down and said, you are not getting away with that today. Great play. A man in motion. Nanan under center. He will be back to pass. Looking for an option deep. Now he's going to roll out. Rolling out towards the far side. Nanan will be taken down and pushed out of bounds. A loss on the play. Looks like Thomas Booker in there for the tackle. It's a monster out there. Yes, Thomas Booker. A huge, huge football player. Huge? Yes, huge. <laughs> indeed. He blocks, he catches, he can really do it all. Thomas Booker, a valuable asset for yeah. Gilman. He was uh, in my advisor in middle school. I think I already mentioned this once on the... Uh, Maybe that's how all of his athleticism. Oh no! Up yes, on you. No, of course. I yeah. have to. I have to yeah, attribute that to me somehow. But, I was um, wondering where you got that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's a phenomenal player, and I just remember one day him coming in and, and growing about uh, three feet out of nowhere. Nanan back to pass, and it's a draw play. They'll hand it off to Ibrahim, and Ibrahim has all this running room down, and he picks up the first down, it looks like. Yeah, that was a Marshawn Lynch type of run. Uh, quick cuts, low to the ground, and then he just powered through two Gilman defenders for that first. We know that last week, the Falcons were able to run all over Archbishop Spalding for 133 yards, and now I think we're starting to see why. The great draw play there, the great fake by the quarterback, the handoff to this monster of a runner in Muhammad Ibrahim, and he is just whizzing right past these Gilman defenders and getting these, these big plays, breaking them off whenever he, fees, whenever he sees fit, as Ibrahim once again on the carry on the far side. And Ibrahim, oh, and he loses the ball! ball. And Gilman has it in bounds. It's going to be Gilman ball as Ibrahim couldn't hold up. We jinxed him again, Joel, and we're talking him up, and he fumbles it. We're going to need to start doing that a little bit more right often. Now, right. Just as I say that Muhammad Ibrahim is just uh, tearing Gilman up, Gilman forces the fumble on Muhammad Ibrahim, and Gilman gets the ball back. Yeah, I know. He seems to be a great runner, but uh, apparently not as good of a ball carrier. Uh, losing the ball right there. That, that hurts. That, that, that's as painful as it gets. Gilman ball first and ten. And now this Gilman team uh, stepping back onto the field here. All of the assistant coaches for Gilman you can see down there on the sideline. Rob Ford, Johnny Foreman, Jeff Guline, Troy Wilson. A lot of these guys had to step up into bigger uh, roles as some of the uh, old staff left. First down and 10 of the shotgun. They hand it off to Brandon Madison. And Madison. Actually, it looked, like, it looked like Hill kept that one. Oh, he did keep it indeed. Little little read option right there and uh, that's the old ground and pound Julian we've been doing it all game uh, it hasn't worked particularly well uh, but it did uh, lead to a field goal so you can you can attribute that to it I'd like to see Gilman come out and maybe try a few more things through the air as uh, it's been a uh, tough sledding up there against that D front yes my apologies Pernell Hill kept that ball there on the read option line up of the shotgun second down and nine and this time he'll actually hand it off and getting around the edge but a flag is out and I'm going to attempt to guess this one right. I'm going to assume it's holding on the offense. Fingers crossed. And it's certainly on the offense, Flag. as the referee Flag indicated. The Waiting for the official call. Yes, it's holding. On the offense, Gilman will be backed holding. up, but they'll keep it down. Gilman. Nathan, I, I got to say. When I'm right, I'm right, Julian. You know what? You're psychic <laughs> is really what it comes down to. You're a genie in a bottle, Nathan. Uh, aren't I just the best? Yeah. I'm just, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, don't feel too good about yourself. <laughs> this entire broadcast has just been nothing but... Uh, yeah, I know. You you feel good about yourself, yeah. I don't feel good about myself. That's what we're doing here. Once again, as we reminded you earlier, we are not here for your service. No, it's we're here a, merely to make ourselves feel good. It's only to inflate uh, Julian's monster ego. That's right. That's what I've been told. That's what I know. And it's how I live my life. Second down to 19. Second to 19. Purnell Hill with two wide receivers on the near side. And the Real slot is Piper Bond, down. the junior. Clapping his hands is Purnell Hill waiting for the snap. He'll take it back to pass, and now he's going to run up the middle. He gets slammed down by this defensive front. On the carry, for going number two, quarterback Purnell Hill. Backing it up even more. Loss of four on the play. So a third down and 23. Third down and I, uh, If I'm the offense coordinator here, I, I don't want to be too uh, brash. This, this kind of yardage isn't easily picked up. Uh, I'm going to try to set up my punter with a little bit of a delay handoff and see how many yards I can get off it. And maybe if we get lucky, he breaks one. But um, 
you know, this isn't the time to sit back in the shotgun and try to air it out for that first down. It looked like good counsel is calling a timeout here with a minute and 27 seconds left in the second quarter. Going to try and get another possession before halftime. Timeout. And uh, rightfully so. I think that they're confident in their offense as they, uh, they've, they're they the only people that have been able to put up a touchdown here today as Gilman's only had a field goal. So they're going to try and give them one more opportunity with a minute 27 to go, stopping the clock here on Gilman's third down and 23 situation and uh, get the ball back for themselves. They're not going to just let the let the clock wind out as some high school teams I think would, Nathan. Yeah, yeah um, this is interesting. I guess they're uh, trying something a little bit different here. It seems that they are interested in trying to go for a big play and you know it's, it's been tough sledding as I said earlier trying to break off long plays. Um, we'll see what the offensive corner tries something here. He is a pretty unique guy in his play call. He's, he's run some uh, terrific uh, you know um, sort of uh, genie like plays where players will just kind of sprint around and uh, you know wildcats and you know you get these motions going here. He's done a good job with that. We'll see if he has another uh, trick up the old wizard sleeve Julian. Third down and 23, lined up in the pistol formation with a minute 27 to go. They'll hand it off, and uh, Brandon Madison is taken down pretty quickly. And uh, the whistle's blown. Another timeout from good counsel. They really do want this ball back before the half. So Gilman will be forced to punt. The clock is stopped, as Max said, at 119. Good counsel, I think they're banking on the fact that Gilman's punting situation is not the, the most ideal. Uh, so uh, they're hoping that another one has shanked up in the air and they can get good field position. And now uh, we're going to see a little bit of Good Council's two-minute offense with uh, just a minute to play left in this game. They're going to be trying to move the ball quickly, and they don't have as many timeouts as they would like. Uh, this is going to be crucial. If they score here, this game uh, becomes really different when you head into halftime because now you're talking about a lead that, that's two possessions, and you can do a lot. You can have a little more confidence on their side of the ball, and you can run some plays uh, – just to burn some clock. The clock then turns to be your friend in that situation. For all you students tuning in, Student Photo Day, is uh, that's next week. So visit gilman.edu for details, dates, and order forms. Yeah. Don't forget to smile, Julian. Don't forget. It's the most important part, right? Yeah. Although I'd say getting your order form in is pretty important, as this one's a pretty good punt down towards the 50-yard line. They will get it inside Gilman territory. It, it actually looked like the good counsel player ran into Drew Ehrlich, causing a penalty. The Greyhounds might be back on offense. Oh, my. I didn't see the flag in the backfield, but, Mac, you may be right as... Uh, rough in the punter. Yeah, Drew Ehrlich is certainly... He certainly looks a little bit roughed up right now. We're waiting to call. We could hear the gasps from the Gilman student section as we watch that yep. ball hang up in the air. Automatic it's, first down. Yes, that's an automatic first down. The penalty on good counsel for roughing the punter, and Gilman catches a break here. And Gilman student section says, you can't do that. No, they can't do that, Nathan. That's a horrendous play there. No, yeah, that's uh, right there. All you're doing is trying to save the, um, the punter there. You don't want this guy coming out and getting hurt. Uh, so it's all about the safety in that situation, well, and uh, it, it shows a, a lack of, I guess, um, a thoughtfulness when you kind of take him out when he's kind of defenseless back there. I think uh, that's a, that's a mistake that when they go into the locker room, the coaches are going to be livid about, and if they give up points because of it, they're uh, going to be even more livid. Yeah, now we get to see Gilman's two-minute offense, and uh, certainly exciting. We're going to see them trying to pass the ball and move the ball down the field quickly, uh, and unlike the uh, good counsel, they do have some timeouts to work with. So it's first down and 10 for Purnell Hill in this Gilman offense. The back to his left is Brandon Madison. In the slot on the near side is Piper Bond. Hill takes the snap, back to pass. Looking for an option, he's going to loft this one in the air. It's caught by Brandon Madison. Now we have to hurry up. Across the 50-yard line, Brandon Madison gets a fresh set of downs for the Gilman Greyhounds. His clock is winding. It looks like it stopped. Yeah, it clock stopped here. Clock actually stops yes. after a first down. Once they set the ball, the clock starts to run again. That is correct. Just like college, they do it in high school here. The clock will stop as they're moving, and it looks like a miscommunication false start on Gilman. And now the clock won't stop. Well, it will for the penalty. They'll back it up a little bit. But as it works in college football... When there's a play, when the, the clock is running inside of two minutes, they will stop the clock for the ball to be moved to the new spot, and then they will continue, unlike the NFL where the clock will continuously run. Two wide receivers on the near side with 54 seconds to go. Purnell Hill's rolling out, looking for an option. He's going to bullet this one, and it is caught. A sliding grab over there on the far side. Great catch there from Brandon Willis, but the clock's still running, about 40 seconds left. It, it might have actually been smarter just to let that one go because you're not getting many yards there, and uh, it's going to run about 
uh, 30 seconds off that clock. It's not something you want. And now Gilman's going to call a timeout, wasting a lot of time there. They, they certainly did. Now 32 seconds on the clock, maybe just trying to get in some sort of field position for a field goal for Adero Mandala. Uh, maybe that's the, the the move here. Yeah, and then that's not though exactly what you want because now it's still you're still down and it's still going to be a, a, a possession game. A uh, touchdown's the ideal score here because it of puts course. you up possession. Not you know obviously, but yeah, it's it's I, I typically don't like kicking two field goals back to back when I'm down a touchdown score because you're going to still be down one, um, and it just doesn't bode well for you down the line because they could score and then their play change becomes more aggressive because they're not going to be trying to settle for a field goal. They're just going to be trying to score. Uh, Gilman. You know, obviously wants that touchdown, but I'm sure they won't be too upset if they get up uh, three points here. Well, if Gilman does decide to go with the kicking game in Adero Mandala, the wind is in his favor as it is uh, blowing out towards Northern Parkway. Mm -hmm. And three points is better than none, Julian. No doubt about it. You want to take every opportunity to score that you can. And being down by one point at the half against the number two ranked team in good counsel, it's not a bad situation to be in. As it looks like they're going to kneel it. Yeah, not taking any risks. I uh, can't blame that decision. Uh, I guess they thought too much time went off the clock, and um, they'll just be going into halftime uh, down a possession. And it's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but Julian, it's, it's also not the best. That's for sure, as Tim Holly's going to play it safe, and Gilman's going to head into the locker room as 15 seconds are left on the clock, but they don't matter as they're going to wind down to zeros. And uh, we are approaching halftime, and we are practically at halftime here at Gilman School. And uh, Good Council leads... Here, 7-3 against the Gilman Greyhounds. Of course, good counsel, the number two team in the state of Maryland, according to Varsity Sports Network. So Gilman putting up a good fight, Nathan. Let's hope that they can come out in the second half and show and good counsel why they're underrated. Good yeah, it's, it's been a tough one so far, and it's Gilman been a defensive three. battle. There hasn't been uh, many big plays save for that uh, huge run by good counsel. That's right. Uh, that, that, that scored the touchdown, uh, but it's been back and forth, uh, a, a battle of field position. It's one of those that exactly uh, they aren't the most exciting games. Um, but if you're a football fan, they're certainly fun to watch because they're back and forth and they're physical. And Mac, maybe a highlight of this first half for Gilman has been their defense. Other than that big run that they gave to Muhammad Ibrahim for the touchdown, they have been stout. They have made sure that not a lot of plays are going for big yardage pickups. And this Gilman defense needs to continue to do that and back up hopefully a better offensive situation in the second half of the Greyhounds. That's definitely true, Julian. Let's go back to the uh, to the stop that Gilman made on fourth down when uh, the uh, Falcons were driving inside the in the Gilman red zone. And, and uh, the Hounds and Antonio DeCerbo were able to get a tackle and uh, give Gilman the ball back. That truly was a momentum shifter. Nothing short of clutch right there. And uh, if, if they would have scored there, you'd have been seeing uh, a 14-3 to lead. That would have been uh, very difficult. Or perhaps if they would have kicked the field goal, it would have been a one-possession lead. Uh, so Gilman's hanging with them right now. It's been close. Uh, good Council's definitely winning the, uh, the battle so far, but in the second half, you know, I feel pretty confident that Gilman's going to switch some things up and try maybe to go over the air a little bit and find some success doing that. And now that we have uh, got ourselves into halftime, we will take a short break here on Greyhound TV. Glad to have all of you with us here today with 13 minutes to go in halftime. We'll sign off here for just a few minutes, and we'll be back for the start of the third quarter in just a few. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll be back in just a few moments.
Back uh, to some Gilman Greyhound football versus uh, Good Council, the Good Council Falcons here at Gilman School. We've got about 40 seconds until uh, halftime is over here, and Gilman is trailing 7-3 to three against the number two team in the state, Good Council. And Nathan, we've seen a lot of great things from Gilman. We've seen strong defense. We've seen some pretty good offense. Brandon Madison has been a bull of a runner. Yeah. But they gave up one big play to Muhammad Ibrahim, the star running back for good counsel, and he made them pay. So Gilman, I think they need a few big plays of their own. Yeah, definitely. I, I've been always a big fan of stretching the field out. Uh, they've been pretty tic-tac, uh, short passing so far, and you assume that's to set up the big plays down the field. Um, you know, some, some streaks, some verticals, uh, some routes, maybe some posts to try to get these guys open deep. Uh, you need to pick up a lot of yards, and especially when you're forced back into your own end zone like Gilman has been. You need to get a bunch of yards if you're trying to get a 90-yard play or 90 yard drive. It's, it's very difficult to do that by just uh, them nickeling and diming you and you slowly driving down the field. So I think Gilman's going to come out here, uh, try to stretch the field, run a couple more screen plays, little little out plays, hopefully bounce one of those big. Um, and, yeah, just stick to that kind of script and hope uh, things turn out a little bit better than they have. Uh, so far. Yes, and this Gilman student section is riled up here. They're getting ready for the second half, led by, of course, President Matt Tomaselli, and it looks like uh, James Cole is also going a little bit crazy down there. He, but, he likes losing his mind, Julian. Yeah, he, he really looks like he is right now. He's got the uh, short shorts on, the American flag. He's, uh, he's a big patriot, and we're glad to have him out there on our sideline. The sun is beating down here at Gilman School as we are Almost set for the start of the second half. Looks like they uh, they pushed the clock back a little bit. Oh, it gives us more time, Julian, uh, to talk about our feelings. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know how I'm, I'm feeling right now, Nathan? Wow. I'm feeling like Gilman needs a win today. Oh, yes. Uh, don't we all? Is that our mood for today? Like, uh, have you ever seen those little like mood things that you flip over? Like, I'm feeling yeah, exactly. sad, uh, stressed out. Ours is I'm feeling like a win. G Gilman yeah. needs a win. That's like I'm not sure what face would be on the page for that. I I'd hope it would uh, be a greyhound. I, yeah, I would hope so. However you can make a greyhound face. Emoji? I'm not, I don't know. not sure how you get it. Have to be a they need emoji. to come out with a greyhound emoji. That'd be uh, nice. That'd be, that would make our job a lot easier as uh, when we post uh, Twitter and stuff like that. For all, it, yeah. it, really, it really would. For all you people watching uh, in the Gilman marketing department, why don't we get on that? Yeah. Make it a, Gil a Gilman emoji on. pack. I don't know who who, who calls that shot, but uh, whoever does. Whoever does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another interesting thing, we've seen a bunch of uh, old Gilman guys returning like uh, Wes wearing his, um, I guess he's a Navy guy, Navy uniform on. That looked really cool. He's decked out in the all white. Uh, I, I, we've seen... Um, uh, with old guys like um, Jake Avalo around here. Uh, so there's there's been a bunch of returners uh, for the game. That's all I've seen so far. And um, if you're looking like, uh, you, know, you know, where are they now kind of thing, Steven Sabinellis was named a finalist for the uh, NFF, which is the National the Football the Foundation man. Scholar Gilman Athlete Award. Uh, yes. So Gilman uh, guys moving on from playing football, doing great things. Um, return to our it's been, um, it, it's been it's been good to see these guys come back, you know. It's, it's good to see them around, and it just shows you that Gilman's a very transformative place, and you even want to come back here um, after you've left. It's, it just it's kind of leaves that kind of an impact on you. Yes, of course, Steven Spinell a, uh, a fantastic offensive line for Gilman here today. Uh, excuse me, not here today, last year, yes. but uh, now at Michigan. Now yeah, at Michigan, If we yes. get him down on that line, I'm sure we'd be playing a lot better. That would be fantastic. I think Gilman would really use him today, but the O-line today has been really fantastic. So, uh, it's there's, been terrific. Yes. Getting set for the kickoff. Great booming kick down towards the goal line. 10-yard line, 20-yard line for good counsel. Rushing up the far side and bulldozing over, guys, but there's a flag down. Let's see if it's a block in the back. On the return, number five. Tremaine Scott, there's a flag on the play. Looks, looks like it's going to be on good counsel as they're starting to uh, walk backwards. So good counsel will have to face the penalty here to start the half. It's another good run back by the gig returner, and there there have been problems on special teams all over the field. Gilman needs to, you'd, you'd hope they would have done that at halftime, address those kind of needs, but again, coming out as well as they've been uh, in the first half and just moving the ball in good field position. But finally, uh, an illegal block is now going to give Gilman at least some cushion here on defense side to give up a few yards and still not give up a point. So the quarterback, Nannan, under center in the I formation, and he will hand this ball off to the fullback, bulldozing forward. On the carry. Yeah, that'll uh, be number 27, um, Taylor Carmen. Cameron, Cameron Taylor. Cameron, Cameron, Cameron Taylor. Taylor, yes, Taylor Cameron. Cameron Taylor. Cameron Taylor. God, man, these names. 
tough to get the first yeah, name before be the more, last there name. There needs to be more Bob Smiths out there. And why <laughs> do you do that last name before the first name? You have to read it backwards. It doesn't, Just to make your life more difficult, yeah, Nathan. Who thought that was a good idea originally? As oh. Dan will hand this one off to Muhammad Ibrahim. And Ibrahim oh, bulldozing man. secondary defenders okay. down to the 40-yard line. Muhammad Ibrahim, he has got it all, Nathan. He's trying to get right through this Gilman defensive front. If I'm giving out game balls, at least for the first half uh, so far, he, he's definitely getting one. He's been terrific all game. Breaking off big runs, we saw that one there. That was a play that he could have been stopped for five yards and still been a decent run, but no, he shifts out of a tackle, moves the ball for a few more yards, and that's they've just been running the ball down their throats so far. Uh, ground and pound to success. 11 minutes in the third quarter. Nan in a quick pass, and this one is completed. A diving catch there over towards the far side. That play made by number three, Darnell Pratt. And Julian, whatever they were talking at at halftime seems to be working. They've moved the ball already almost about uh, 20 yards. Uh, so far, it's been uh, pretty terrific. It's actually, it's been 20 yards. Um, they've come out firing. They've come out running the ball. I, I can't say, say enough about uh, how effective they've been so far at the beginning of the second half. Second down and four for good counsel. Nanan lined up under center, and this will be a handoff to Muhammad Ibrahim. And Ibrahim finding room. There goes Muhammad Ibrahim. And he has got a Gilman defender pulling him down inside the 20-yard line just oh, around the 10. Yeah. And a Number fantastic one, run Muhammad again, Ibrahim. finding the holes. He's been perfect so far this game. Um, you know, can't say enough about how well he's run the ball. He's been physical. He's been fast. He has good acceleration. Uh, he's been shifty. There, there's not a single thing he hasn't been so far, and right now that's a big reason why they're up, Julian. 10 20 to go in the third quarter, and good counsel is already knocking on the door here. First down and 10 inside of Gilman's red zone. They've only scored seven today, but they're trying to make that 14 as Nannan is lined up in the I formation as they've done so much today. The new back in the backfield is number five, Traymond Scott, Stott rather, and Stott takes the carry up the middle. On the carry. So not only has it been great running so far for these guys, but their blocking's been terrific. They've had uh, the holes open up, particularly their blocking from their receivers. You've seen those big runs, and those big runs, Julian, they're a microcosm of what the receiver's doing, blocking guys. The only reason you get those runs is because the defensive backs are being shut out. They're not able to come over and make the tackle, and you're relying on a safety to kind of wrap him up uh, as we saw in that huge run last year, he tackled him inside the 10. Uh, but one-on-one -on -one with the safety is a matchup you like all day if you're the uh, if you're the running back. Second down and five. The first down marker is not quite the end zone yet. They've still got to get a first down, or at least they can get a first down before they make it to the end zone. They'll hand it off to Stott. Stott finding room, and Stott is into the end zone for a good council touchdown. So apparently, Joel's they have two running backs who have uh, worked well for them. Again, you know, uh, just a terrific job running the ball. That's all offensive line. That's all receivers. Gilman just getting beat off the ball. Uh, it's not looking pretty so far. Uh, if Gilman wants to win this game, they need to kind of put weights in their pocket and hold these guys and not let them break off those kind of huge runs and not let them just dominate the line of scrimmage like they've had been so far at the beginning of the second half. The, uh, the Gilman defense was doing such a good job in the first half with the exception of the Muhammad Ibrahim touchdown run, as the extra point is good, of doing exactly that, of stopping this run game from good counsel that was so good against Archbishop Spalding last week. But to start out the third quarter, nowhere to be found is that defense of the first half. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, they've just been running it, grounding, pounding it. Uh, it's been really effective, and it's been uh, painful for Gilman to watch. Uh, now it's a two-possession game, and so now the, the thought process changes from all oh, we could just score at any point as long as we have the ball to now we need to make a, a drive happen. And if Gilman gives them the ball back without scoring, you can see this game slowly come out of hand if, if a good counsel leans on that run and continues to drive. And so for Gilman, it's put up or shut up time. you got to right. go down. you got to put points on the board. It doesn't matter how. Uh, it just needs to happen now, or else you're going to find yourself in maybe a three-possession deficit, and then that's the game. So good counsel getting ready to kick this ball off. They have a 14-3 lead over the Greyhounds. The Hounds trying to find some momentum. It's a squib kick. Diving on the ball. And there at around the 30-yard line, just short of the 30-yard line, is where Gilman will start their drive. You kick it to the uh, guy who doesn't look like he knows how to catch the ball, Julian. That's the offensive lineman there. Uh, they're not known for their returning skills, Julian, so... Uh, good for him just to fall on the ball. I might have considered trying to pitch it back and make something happen, but uh, the safe play was just to dive on it and uh, let your offense take over in decent field position at about the 29-yard line. Uh, so Gilman now, it, it's all going to lean on them, their offensive line, their receiving core, getting open, making plays and making this drive. Uh, again, it's now or never, Jules. 
And I think that uh, the name of the game for this Gilman offense, led by Russell Wren and Tim Holly here, has been uh, play it safe. But I think they're going to have to start breaking out of that shell here in the second half. They're down by multiple scores. They hand this ball off to Brandon Madison, and Madison is taken down after a short game. Gilman number three, Brandon Madison. And of course, stay tuned to uh, Greyhound TV's Twitter page, uh, at Greyhound underscore TV. That's at Greyhound underscore TV. We actually have some exciting news that I'm um, happy to announce here today. The Gilman News is actually making an app, and Greyhound TV broadcast will be available live on that app. Uh, so stay tuned to the Greyhound TV Twitter account for all information about that and everything Greyhound TV. 8.50 on the clock in the third quarter. Purnell Hill back to pass. Stepping up in the pocket. Under pressure. He is taken down. Good counsel showing that they've got a strong defensive front that can get in the backfield, and they do just that. Third down and long coming up. They've been punishing the Gilman offensive linemen. They've been getting back and putting pressure on the quarterback. It's tough for Purnell Hill if they have one, two, three guys in your face almost every play. Uh, you know, Gilman needs to, to, to find some sort of way of picking up this third down, uh, and or, or else they're going to have to hope their defense comes through big. But uh, the offense has not moved the ball well this game uh, so far, and right now it's uh, you need to have some success over the air or you're not going to be able to pull this one out. Absolutely. I completely agree, Nathan. Third down and 10, Purnell Hill in the shotgun. Back to pass, under pressure, stepping up, gets it off, up in the air, and it's caught by, oh, oh. and it's dropped. For a second there, Allende Watson had it in his hands, but it fell out, and an incompletion will lead to fourth down. Didn't it look like that ball was caught, Nathan? Yeah, you know, he's so reliable, Allende Watson. He made that catch earlier, and you have a lot of confidence in his hands. Uh, so the fact that he wasn't able to haul it in probably means that that ball was uh, going to be very difficult to bring in. It was going to be a hard one to catch. Um, uh, so, you know, that's, that's tough, though. It's a tough field to swallow because that's a first down catch that you miss. And uh, Gilman now punting. They have to hope their defense comes through. That good counsel rush has been getting back there all game. Uh, Purnell has had no time to throw the ball, and you can't imagine, you can't win games if you're constantly under pressure, Julian. It's true, as we have an injured player on the field for good counsel, so we'll step away for just a few moments. We have eight minutes left in the third quarter here at Gilman School. I am Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein, Mac Webster, and our executive producer, John Ball, with uh, Jack Olson on the camera, Rhett Dawson on the field camera, Anish Sood on the scoreboard, as well as Cole Vincent. Glad to have all of them along board here today. If you are in the Gilman community, if you're a student at Gilman and you're in seventh grade or above, feel free to apply for Greyhound TV. GreyhoundTV.org and then go to the apply page. We'll, we are happy to have everybody and anybody, so please feel free to sign up and uh, really here at Greyhound TV. It's like a family, Nathan. Yeah. You will not get turned away. We will not leave you out in the cold. That's right. We'll bring you in, we'll give you some food, and you can help out any way you can. That's right. Uh, we, don't, we don't care. We just like to have people come out. Uh, you can ask any of the guys who have done it. Uh, they always seem to love doing it, and it's been a uh, it's been great so far. And now they're helping the good counsel player off the field. That's number five, Tremaine Stott, the scorer of the last touchdown for good counsel. As he makes his way off to the sideline. Fourth down and ten here for Gilman. They're going to be forced to punt Drew Ehrlich. And I think it's important just to mention that I think today has been a testament to just how important the kicking game can be. Drew Ehrlich has had his struggles punting this ball, and uh, that certainly has given good counsel a fair amount of field position, or good field position, rather, as he'll take this snap. Here's another high punt. Down to uh, about the 45-yard line, a fair catch called for. But certainly special teams are important, Nate. No, it's been a field position battle all game. We've highlighted it all game. Again, Gilman's getting pinned back. They can't move the ball. They're stuck inside their own 30. Uh, and then they have to punt it, and then good counsel gets the ball about midfield. They break off a couple runs, and then they put points on the board. That's how it's been all game, Julian. Uh, Gilman needs to change the tempo here. They need to change the course of the game. And, and one thing, Julian, I think you need to uh, apologize to uh, Anish Sood for calling him Jack Olson as he's working the camera now. Oh, my bad. Yes, it's, uh, Anish Sood is on the camera, not Jack Olson. We made a switch at halftime. They tricked you, Julian. My bad, my yeah. bad. Thank you so much, Anish. He's a valued member of the Greyhound TV community. And thank you, Nathan, for correcting me, oh, as you so often do. Yes, no, I have to, Julian. That's my job. Yeah. That's why you have me on here. I'm just uh, basically I'm a, a janitor sweeping up all of your messes. That's essentially how I... <laughs> How my job works. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for what you do, Nathan. I might as well hand you a mop right now. Oh, of course, yeah. yes. So the Offices of Community and Diversity invites Gilman families to attend their Navigation navigation the Waters? Navigating, navigating the Waters. Navigating the Waters. You see, that's why you don't have me read these things. Uh, a night of discussion to address the school's procedures, community benefits, uh, things to expect, and how to deal with the unexpected on Thursday, September 29, 2016, from 6.30 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. in the Lumen Center Lecture Hall. You can register for that at gilman.edu. 
Thank you, Nathan. First down and 10 coming up here for good counsel at about the 43-yard line. And now the Gilman defense needs to make something happen. We saw that rush against Dunbar. They had some success there, and now they need it. So they'll hand it off to the fullback, who's being fought to the ground. This Gilman defensive front not having any of it. <laughs> that is uh, number 56 on the tackle, Jake Brummett. Slides will lose his helmet, so now number 79 comes in to fill in for him. And Gilman, again, remaining sturdy. They haven't been able to run it with a fullback much so far this game, but you, as we've seen, number one, the running back, has broken off some tremendous gains, and uh, I'm sure they'll lean on him here. So Travis Nannan in the I formation. They've been in that all day, it seems. A man in motion moving out towards the near side. A quick pass, and this one oh. is incomplete as uh, getting on the hit is number four, Brandon Willis for Gilman. And third down coming up. Jordan, you can't run that play twice. You know, that first time they had success with it, they got five yards, and they said, oh, we'll go back to it again. Uh, we weren't letting them have it, Jordan. That no, was we were not. shut down immediately. He did exactly how you how you want to do as a cornerback in that situation. You see the guy dart in. You want to undercut him and put some contact on him, maybe try to pick it if you're able to, you know, intercept it and get, and get quickly uh, there before he's able to put, uh, the, put his hands on it. But, uh, you know, good play by him by just knocking it away and, uh, really basically putting a, putting your message out there that you're not going to let him do that anymore. Travis Nannan back to pass, looking for an option. He's going to beam it over the middle, and it's oh. too high for the intended receiver, Jonathan Donnelly. So fourth down here for good okay, counsel. Good Jonathan stop there for Gilman. Jonathan of course, Donnelly. that pass is a little bit too it's high. Complete. I think that if it were on the money, he would have made yeah. the catch, and it would have been a conversion. So Gilman catches a break. That could be a 15-yard gain right there, and he can continue to run. Um, and uh, as... Me <laughs> Give, As, I'll let you talk. Give, give a lot of credit there to uh, Alex Sladzinski, who was in on the quarterback and laid a hit on right as he was throwing it. Absolutely. Keep stepping on uh, Matt Webster's feet there, Julian. Of course. That's our, that's our fault. We, we got to let him talk. We got to let him talk. Yeah. He's like a caged animal. Sometimes you just have to feed him a little bit. Yeah. High punt over towards down. the 30-yard line. Takes a bounce right into the hands of a Gilman fielder and uh, he'll be taken down at just about the 30-yard line. There's been some risky uh, punt returns so far. Uh, they've been having guys uh, not call fair catches, but rather kind of jump on the ball and hope you can uh, get separation there. Uh, it's risky because if he gets popped right there, that ball comes out, and then Kid Castle could fall on it in beautiful field position. Uh, usually you want to shy away from trying to risk anything on uh, the punt return side, but so far for Gilman, it hasn't gone badly. Uh, the thing that has gone badly, though, has been the Gilman offense unable to move the ball uh, to the other side of the 50 and we're sure they're going to need to see that now. So Gilman's offense coming onto the field. On the near side, the wide receiver is Brandon Willis, and the receiver in the slot is Piper Bond. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Gilman offense take to the air a little bit more on this drive. Flanked by backs is Purnell Hill. They'll hand it off, and immediately I'm wrong. Brandon Madison trying to uh, power his way. There's a flag down. Carry number three, running back Brandon Madison. There's a flag on the play. Waiting for the call. with 7.06 to go in the third quarter. As the referees deliberate. Brandon Madison is uh, signaling that the penalty was on good counsel, but let's just wait and see. I'm just looking around. I've never noticed how beautiful the Gilman campus is from this view, Julian. It really is fantastic. It's a great view. And the addition of Alexander Sotir Stadium, Edward W. Round Field, has made it even more yeah. amazing, I'd say. Yeah. Julian, have we thanked the Sotirs enough so far? We have. We have. And Alexander Sotir actually follows us on Twitter. Does it? So we're glad to have him along board if he's watching Excellent. today. Excellent. Um, thank you so much for all the contributions you've made to the Gilman community. With uh, 6.58 to go here in the third quarter, Gilman has a uh, first down and two situation. As the flag is out. Flag on the play. Looks like a false start. Not sure who that was, but uh, it's a bummer after just just gaining, uh, catching a break there and having it first and two. Now you're backed up to first and seven. I think Nathan and I are both a little bit confused. Why was it first and two? What was the call? Well, it looked like a face mask, and uh, I'm not sure why it wasn't an automatic first down. I, I, I too, was a little confused. First down and seven. Zach Jones in motion. He stands in, in front of Brandon Madison under pressure. Uh, excuse me, Brunel Hill, as this one is incomplete. Just making stuff up out there, Joel. Yeah. Calling, calling penalties on the fly. First and two. It's ridiculous. I've never seen that. Pass intended for number three, Brandon Second Madison. down and seven coming up here as that pass was intended for Brandon Madison. 6.30 to go in the 
Third quarter, Gilman trails at 14 to three. Second and seven. And coming on is uh, Thomas Booker in at the tight end position. Brandon Willis on the near side. Purnell Hill lined up at the shotgun. Second down and seven, a man in motion. And they will hand it off to the man in motion, trying to get some room as Zach Jones and Jones being pushed forward by the defenders. He's very close to the first down marker. He may have it, Nathan. Looks like they gave it to him. On the sweep, running back, number 12, Zach Jones. Gilbert so there's ball, a fresh ten. set of downs for the Greyhounds as they continue to move the ball down the field, down by multiple oh, scores here. Of course, for all of you uh, following the Orioles, they had a fantastic win last night, uh, ending with a play at the plate. Uh, that's a big, exciting uh, postseason push there, and hopefully Gilman and their football will be able to make a postseason push here as nobody's expecting them to in, in other communities in the MIAA, but we here at Gilman certainly are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, everyone's been down on us since uh, we lost a lot of our coaching staff in Biff Pogey, but Julian, there's a lot of core players that haven't left this team, and they have a lot of fight. They care deeply about this organization. Uh, we brought a new coaching staff. Tim Holly's done a fantastic job getting these guys regularly for the regular season. Uh, so Gilman, I think, is in a great opportunity for this push. But right now, Julian, they need to make a push on the offensive side if they want to continue down the line and make themselves a, a contender uh, for those, those top spots uh, in the playoffs later in the season. Um, and right now, I think it's all going to have to do with the um, the play at the receiving position. Uh, they have hopefully have to catch good counsel where their safeties are up and try to take a shot deep because they haven't been able to move the ball uh, just through the ground game and through the short passing game. So we have another injured Falcon, D'Angelo Thompson, being helped off the field here as we certainly hope everything's all right with him. He's taken it back by the good council trainers. 6.20 to go in the third quarter. I am Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein and Mac Webster bringing you the call here at Gilman School. Gilman School. School. Yes. <laughs> the handoff to Brandon Madison trying to find some room. room. He's got an opening. Brandon, he's got, Brandon he's got Madison an opening. all the way down the far sideline. Brandon Madison. Oh, oh, just oh, hops out of bounds around the 12. Oh, pushed out of bounds just around the 10-yard line. Brandon Madison with a huge run there. First down and 10. First down and goal, perhaps, for the Gilman Greyhounds. Really starting to ignite ignite this crowd. They've been uh, they've been silent for about the last 15 minutes, and now they're starting to get into it. So now a first down situation for the Greyhounds. They'll be at about the 12-yard line. The first down marker is about the two-yard line. Line up with a shotgun, a low snap, and here's the handoff to number 11 for Gilman. Trying to find some room, but he cannot. That is Mason Freeman. And finally, some life with this Gilman rushing attack. You know, again, you, you kind of ground and pound for a while. You wear it on that defense line, and then eventually at some point during the game, you break one of those, and that's exactly what happened there. Gilman finally showing some life. And uh, Julian, if they, if they able to put in some points here, they're back in this game. They're right with them. I want everybody at home right now to use your <laughs> imagination. Imagine that we have the technology to show you a replay. Yes. Brandon Madison's run, the blocking was superb. And Brandon Madison, the, the, the ball carrier vision, second to none. As here goes Brandon Madison as he loses the ball, but it looked like the ground caused the fumble. So it will be down by contact there. Third down and long coming up. At this point, you want to take a shot at the end zone. You know, you don't want to put another uh, field goal up there. If you do, it's still a one possession game, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, however, I'd imagine they'd run a poster out here trying to get someone open in the corner of the end zone. Uh, Purnell certainly has the arm for it, Join, and these receivers are big and physical. They can get open. Uh, we'll see what they've got here. I, uh, I like the uh, option here to throw it to number seven, Thomas Booker, who's the big guy. He uh, coming across the middle. Purnell Hill rolling out on a third down and long. He's going to toss this one over to Mason Freeman. Freeman out of bounds short of the first down marker. Now it looks like he actually stayed in bounds, so the clock will continue to wind. So that was number 12, perhaps? And I'd imagine in this fourth down, they, they run and they kick this ball in. It would make the game a one-possession game, and all they would have to do is get the two points. I, I think that's a smart play there. Uh, but right now, the offense is on the field, and I don't think they're going to do that. Correction, number 12, Zach Jones on the reception, not Mason Freeman. They're going for it. So Gilman being bold here. 14 to three, your score. Gilman trying to make it a little bit less of a deficit. Purnell uh, Hill, as we know. have a stoppage here, a timeout called by Gilman. I don't know if I agree with the call for going on it here, Join. I think so, it makes so much more sense in my mind to kick another field goal. I hope you get the ball back and score and get two and then put yourself in a tie game rather than risking not putting points on here, being in a two-possession deficit, 
and hoping you have to hold them again with time winding down in the third quarter. I think the safe bet here is just to kick it through and then hope you get another stop, which, I mean, it's not unreasonable for that to happen. As we have uh, meetings on both sidelines. And right now, we're seeing the face of Aaron Sluckin, number 19, as he looks on from the sidelines. Sluckin, a valued member of this team. He's a very emotional guy and you like to have him on your sidelines. But Julian, this is the pivotal point in this game. Fourth down and four. Purnell Hill takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Rob Levine, loves it to the end zone. He got it's it! It's caught! He got it! Thomas Touchdown. Booker! Thomas Booker with the reception. He fought a defender for it, but he got it in the end zone. What a play! And does Gilman go for two? Uh, I, I think certainly here, Julian, if you want to set up the field goal to win it. Uh, however, the, the safe the safe one is to kick it through. I say they go for it, Julian. It, it does make sense. Uh, you put yourself in a chance to tie with a field goal later. Uh, a phenomenal catch by Thomas Booker. He's the guy you want to throw it up to. He's the tallest guy and the most physical. Who else? Thomas Booker with the big body, the big hands, and the big determination as he goes up to get it in the end zone. James Cole is making oh my a laugh goodness. all the way around the field. Thank you to our, our producer, Anish Sood, for pointing out that <laughs> James Cole, member of the senior class, is making, as Nathan said, a lap around Edward Brown Field as this this uh, extra point is up and good. So Gilman plays it safe. They don't go for two. So it's a 14 to 10 game. <laughs> someone, someone chased him and found him out there. James Cole running around the flag. Julian, I don't know if I understand that call because a touchdown still puts you up. I agree. I don't understand it either. A two-pointer puts you at a chance. If you don't get it, you still can win with that touchdown. If you do get it, uh, the two-pointer, then you need a field goal to tie. Right. Uh, if you kick an extra point, it doesn't matter. It's one of those situations where kicking the extra point doesn't necessarily help you in the grand matter. scheme of the scoring situation. If you if you don't get that extra point, you still win by a touch. It's an interesting call. I, I guess they're just trying to, they didn't have confidence in the play call with the two-point uh, conversion. I don't understand it, Julian, but um, that's why I'm not coaching. That's why I'm up here in the booth. Well, Fourth down and five on the previous. I'm sorry to cut you off, Matt. Go ahead. Well, one of the other things to think about is there's still four minutes left in the third quarter, so uh, I guess Coach Holly still thinks that the Hounds are going to have plenty of opportunities to go ahead, not worrying about not being able to score. Mm, that's, yeah, that's a good point. And so there is plenty of time left in this game, but let's just go back for a second. Of course, our imaginary replay, we'll go back to that. Fourth down and five. Purnell Hill, he's got the, the fate of this Gilman team potentially resting his in, in his hands. You know what that reminded me of, Julian? Montana Dallas Clark at the back of the end zone. Maybe the catch. The catch. The catch. That yeah. reminds me of that. He was rolling out off his back foot, throws it in, and then Booker jumps up and catches it. That was beautiful. Uh, that's how you that's how you draw it up, Julian. That really was fantastic. He he knew that he needed to go to somebody reliable, and he certainly did. He saw Thomas Booker there. He said, "Hey, man, I'm gonna give you a chance," and he did it. And uh, Thomas Booker, he he lived up to his expectations. He made a fantastic catch. So this one's a, a squib kick, sort of as it goes towards uh, the uh, the sideline on the far side, fielded by Good Counsel, oh, trying to find some room, some room and uh, taken down around the 40-yard line is number five, Tremaine Stott, who looks to be better after oh, being taken off on an injury oh, on the previous drive. Oh, man, drive. there's a Good Counsel player down with his helmet Stott. off. Oh, He's, my goodness. Man. My, oh, my. So we'll take the uh, camera off of that briefly as they attend to the Good Counsel player on his sideline. I wouldn't be surprised to see if Gilman trainers uh, went over to the sideline to try and help as well. Uh, but now Gilman is in an interesting situation. They're down by four points here at the end of the third quarter. They had an opportunity to maybe make it a, a one field goal game, but they chose to play it safe and just make it a four-point game. Head coach Tim Holly has got to be thinking this defense needs to get out there and get after this team and get after this quarterback, get after Muhammad Ibrahim, make sure that they don't bust off any more big plays. Yeah, um, that's that's what you want to do. You need to control that running attack, Julian. You need to make sure they're not able to cut it up and, and bust a long run. Uh, if they get in field goal position, they can basically um, make this a, a touchdown that would, would just tie it, and that's what they're going to be trying to do here. Um, so if you're Gilman, you need to hope your front four holds up and the uh, linebacking core is going to have to make enough tough tackles to keep them in the game. I'd imagine they'd play it safe and run the ball and wouldn't risk throwing an interception at this point in the game. But with four minutes in the third quarter, they still have enough time to come back, Julian, and... Um, Gilman right now needs to be focused on the four and out. 
And uh, you can find all things Greyhound TV at greyhoundtv.org, including our schedule, our archive. If you are a, a member of the Gilman community, log in on YouTube with your Gilman email address and then go to greyhoundtv.org and our archive page. You can watch any and all of our games. And then, of course, you can also find the apply page where you can apply to become a member of Greyhound TV. Of course, as much as we'd like you, like to, we don't we don't uh, invite any of you that don't go to Gilman no. to apply there. No, if but if you do, I mean, we'd love to have have you if you do to go to Gilman. If you don't and you and, and you, you apply, apply. that certainly will be flattering, but uh, it, it will unfortunately go unnoticed. We're gonna have to have to you know send you on a very sad note where you've not been accepted for this. The only fact that you don't go to the school. It's disappointing, but uh, of course that uh, yeah. that that could happen if any yeah. of you are that ambitious. So with uh, 3:53 to go in the third quarter, they're still attending to the injured player on the sideline. It looks like he's being helped off now. Yeah, everyone's kne kneeing down there. The injury uh, was relatively severe, so we hope that guy gets better. Uh, he's able to get up under his own volition, and uh, you know, right now I guess it's 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 Gilman's uh, responsibility here. This defensive side joined uh, to hold them up, and uh, again, as it's going to come through linebacker court, it's going to come through the DNs with Booker. Uh, the, the cornerbacks have to push these guys hard and press coverage, which I imagine they'll be playing. And uh, right now, if, if the game's going to come down to a, a situation where Gilman needs to make a clutch stop here. So lined up in the I formation, under center is Travis Nannan. Nannan will hand it off to the fullback, as he's done so much today, trying to find room, bulldozing forward, and it looks like he's very close to the first down marker. Jordan, they really like that fullback dive of the middle. We've seen them run it a number of times here, I'd say four or five. Uh, there it does more than it's done all the rest of the game. It's been stuffed up for most of the game, uh, but that time they were able to push through, and the center was able to get out and block a safety, and they, they made a... A big play out of nothing there. And Nathan, I'm not afraid to exploit you a little bit. You're a big fan of the fullback dive. Oh, I'm a huge for, fan of the fullback for dive. For years, Nathan Heinlein playing uh, Madden all through the years. He just yeah. loved the fullback dive. So maybe you should coach good counsel someday. I, I, second down and short. Travis Nannan looking a lot past towards the near side caught is caught. Looks like he got a foot in bounds, and that'll be a fresh set of downs and a big play there for uh, for good counsel. See the Gilvin coach over there going crazy as the guy caught the ball. He was so frustrated. Uh, and then he helped the other guy up. That was just a funny little antic there. I don't know if the camera caught that. Uh, but, um, you know, Gilman coaches, man, they're emotional. They're very emotional. So first down and 10 for good counsel after that great catch on the sideline. Looked to me like that was going to fall incomplete, but a great effort there from the good counsel wide receiver as they're lined up on the near hash mark. Travis Nannan under center once again. Lined up on the near side is Darnell Pratt at wide receiver. Again. And they'll hand off the fullback dive, and he'll be taken down. Oh, and the ball out. comes oh, out, but that was after the whistle was blown. Again, you know, the fullback dive is good if you're trying to catch him off on a short down situation. I don't like leading off of the fullback dive uh, in certain cases because it comes predictable. If you just stuff up guys up the middle, have a big nose tackle in there, it's hard to do it. Uh, I like to call it kind of when the opponent's kind of going to predict a passing um, attack at first down. So you do it after you've continuously thrown the ball early on. Uh, but they've stuck to it, and they've had success doing it. So, you know, I can't, I can't shake a stick at them. They've, they've done a good job with that fullback dive. Nannan back to pass, and this one caught. Oh, no, oh, dropped, dropped on the near side by okay, number three, defended. Darnell Pratt. For number three, Darnell Pratt. Third down and ten for good counsel. And if you're Tim Holly, if you're this Gilman coaching staff, you know what you're telling your players right now? Do your job. I hate to quote Bill Belichick here in Baltimore because nobody likes the Patriots no. around here. And if you do, then I don't know. Yeah, then then you know. Go. But yeah, whatever. Fall but, in the ditch. Right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but still, of course, uh, everybody needs to execute and do their job on the defense. Travis Nannan in the shotgun, looking for an option, stepping up in the pocket. Oh. He's going to take off, and he needs to be taken oh. down. He slides short of the well first down short. marker. Going back to what you said earlier about uh, nobody likes the Patriots, uh, very own Gilman Greyhound Cyrus Jones was drafted oh, that's by one. the New England Patriots. Uh, I think he was the 60th overall pick in the second round this yes. uh, this year. And he's, he's, doing he's, he's getting some playing time up there, I yeah. believe. A phenomenal job. He's got some kick returns that he's had. In the preseason, he was named a player of the game. Gilman's own Cyrus Jones doing for the Patriots. That's one reason why, Julian, I might be uh, cheering for those Patriots at some point during the game. Of course, not when they're playing the Ravens or anyone else, but if Cyrus makes a big play, you know, I have no hope, but to, I have no other responsibility than to get excited for it. He's a Gilman guy, Julian. I'm, I'm going to stick with my guys. Maybe that's also because Tom Brady's on your fantasy team. Uh, Travis Nannan hands off to Muhammad uh, Ibrahim, and Ibrahim shaking uh, off tacklers. Uh -oh. There goes Muhammad Ibrahim down the near side. He's pushed out of bounds inside the 10. Mm. That's, that, that was tough, especially there on fourth down. 
it's unexcusable that you, you miss those kind of tackles right there. That's the that's a huge play Good right there. Ball. And now, if they score a touchdown, they again put this at a two possession Good deficit, ball. and and Good give Gillen only a quarter ball. to come back from it. And if they get a field goal, uh, that which is, would be Gillen's best scenario out of here, other than a turnover, uh, you'd still be down a, a touchdown that you need to make up. So right there, it's a, a crucial play. And that running back, Julian, he's been on fire all game. Yes. He uh, he's been the player of the game and the player to watch so far. Gilman needs to find an answer and an answer quick. Hopefully an answer right now as they're nearing the end zone. They hand it off to Muhammad Ibrahim again, and Ibrahim is taken down around the 10-yard line. So Muhammad Ibrahim, he needs to be the focus player for this oh, Gilman defense. Right Second back. and nine coming up Muhammad with 123 to go here in the third the quarter. And one thing I've noticed about him is he's a guy who uh, doesn't seven, start Muhammad. fast at getting the handoff, but he's a guy that accelerates after he, he gets, takes a couple of steps. So, you know, after five yards, he's going at full speed, and he's hard to bring down after that. But if you hit him early and get back there and put pressure on him as he, as he gets the handoff, he's not going to be able to break those out for long runs. It's a lot more difficult. Uh, for him to start up than it is for him to, uh, after five yards, uh, keep the acceleration going. Nannan and Good Counsel lined up in the T formation, and they'll hand it off to Muhammad Ibrahim, oh. and Ibrahim is denied. What a hit. I think that was Rob Levine. Great play by Rob Levine. Rob Levine really knows how to wrap up, Nathan. Oh, he's again, he's probably the best tackler on this Gilman defense, and when he hits, he hits hard. Uh, he's a phenomenal player, playing that outside linebacking position. He's more of a 4-3 kind of guy. A guy who's gonna gonna hit you hard, wrap you up, rather than the guy who's gonna blitz off the end in a three-four scheme. Uh, he does a phenomenal job as that outside tackler, um, and right there you can see Ibrahim is not able to, to to move forward there. Huge play here, third down and nine. Rolling out is Nan and looking for an option under pressure. He gets hit as he throws it out of bounds. Gilman makes the third down stop, and they will likely force a field goal, unless, of course, this veteran head coach on the other sidelines feeling a little bit extra ambitious today. Yeah, uh, Joey, the reason why he's a veteran and he stayed long so long is because he's a smart guy. So yeah, that's right. Being a smart guy, I think he sets up for this field goal here. Uh, if he if he had a little bit of uh, extra sugar in his coffee, he might try for <laughs> a fake, but uh, I doubt that. So, um, you know, good job uh, by them being able to move the ball in scoring position, but it gives Gilman uh, a chance to score a touchdown and tie this up when they get the ball back. So JT Mitchell... On to kick it for good counsel. Mitchell, the kick. This one is over the left upright, but it's good. It sneaks right in. Reminds me of that Justin Tucker kick against said Patriots a few years ago. You remember that one to end the game? Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, I remember that game fondly as we uh, beat the, uh, our... They're not really our rivals. But I call them our rivals. Yeah, they're basically our rivals. Yeah. We play them in the playoffs almost every year. I'm not a fan of them, of course, unless Tom Brady's on my fantasy team, which he always is. Of course. In which case, I silently root in the corner you as do. I hold my phone and check the, check the stats. stats. Because, you know, yes. I'm a sellout like that, Joey, and I'm just going <laughs> to root for my fantasy team over my hometown crowd. That you are. And, of course, Steven Gaskowski, also one of oh, your favorites. Goodness. Well, we don't even need to go into that now. We don't need to... Uh, to uh, to promote the Patriots on this broadcast, no. you can do that in your free time, no, Nathan. I, as I do, Stephen Gostowski, best kick in the league. I draft him. I'm, we're looking at him seventh round, sixth round. That's where I like to get him. No one's expecting it. You can steal him. He's a phenomenal kicker. We'll give you a fantasy football advice podcast. Oh, of course. But uh, but not now, not no, now, of not course. Now. As uh, we get set for Gilman to get the ball back, it's 17 to 10. A good counsel. This is a pivotal drive for the Greyhounds. It's a low kick. It's a line drive to about the 15-yard line, fielded there by Brandon Madison. Madison fighting forward, trying to get to the 40-yard line. He's taken down to the 36. And now finally, Gillen with good field position. This is a rare sight. It's like seeing a unicorn out there, Julian. We finally have the ball at about the 40-yard line, and this is where we can uh, strike. Uh, so right now, Gilman's things are looking up. It's only a seven-point deficit. And if you're Gilman right now, you need to hope you do, do exactly what you did last time, because last time you came out there, ran it with some success, uh, you got to stick to the script there, and I uh, hope they're giving you exactly what they're giving you last time, and they're not able to adjust well. So Gilman, you know, trying to do a lot of the same that they did that last drive. So with five seconds to go here in the third quarter, this will be the last play of the quarter. Brunel Hill lined up in the shotgun. He's got a back to his right, slightly ahead of him, and he will keep this ball. He's going to beam this one. Oh, and it's completed on a juggling catch to Zach Jones. Jones bopped it up in the air and then was able to come down with it. He's got a first down and a good momentum starter to end the quarter. That indeed, Julian, that indeed. You know, it shows great focus right there and great awareness as he's able to find that ball even after the batted, after he batted it out of his own hands. 
Um, so you know, good job, good awareness, uh, good ability to um, to recognize that the ball is taking a different bounce, and you know, good hands able to bring it in and uh, not not let the ball drop loose after the contact was made. So Gilman Julian finally showing some success through the air. Uh, that touchdown was a great example of, of a pass that was perfect for Gilman finding of the big tight end Thomas Booker. There to Zach Jones. I think we'll see more of that as they're going to try to nickel and dime them up the field. And a big shout out to Max Kahn tuning in. Uh, tuning in supposedly from wherever he is. He was just here and yeah. now he's not. Did, so. he, did he run home in that time? Maybe so. I don't know. Is but, he on uh, his phone? He, he, he let me know that he was tuning in. So a shout out to him. And uh, Gilman Does breaks he just want their a home. shout out? I think he just wants a shout out. Maybe. Perhaps. He didn't ask for a shout out. He just texted me. I gave him a shout out. So who knows where he is, but wherever he is. Max, we're thinking of you. As they, uh, they go back to the line here. Right now, I would not be surprised for Gilman to come out of this third, out of this uh, timeout, and uh, go with a long shot here. Yeah, I would not be surprised. Try and catch the defense off guard. They've been running the ball a lot today, but. So, running them to sleep, rocking them to sleep. We'll see if they go deep here. So here's back to pass Purnell Hill. Hill looking to the sideline, and it is in. Oh, let's see. Did he catch it? They're he saying he it. caught it. Allende Watson, he dropped it as he went out of bounds, but he stayed in bounds with possession, and that's a first down for Gilman as they head into good council territory. It's definitely hard for you to overturn that catch as he did have two feet down, had the ball snug and secured, and then kind of fell out of bounds. Uh, but a good job. And uh, Ben Murphy wants a shout out. So Ben Murphy, thank you for uh, tuning in wherever you are. I, thank again, you so much. I just saw we, you. Yeah, you got you guys both were just here, and now you you're you're watching the broadcast. But we love that, of course. Brandon Madison takes the pitch, and uh, Madison down oh. to the uh, 35 yard line. Good gain there. So one thing to think about now as they move the ball closer to Gilman's sideline. Uh, you'd imagine that their uh, their cheering comes into effect here. This loud Gilman crowd might make the uh, defenders a little bit nervous as the ball gets backed in. So Gilman slowly enclosing good counsel in a trap back there, and I think they'll be able to have more success as the ball gets closer and closer to their end zone. So now Purnell Hill lined up in the pistol. Brandon Madison behind him on a second down and four with 11.47 to go in the fourth quarter. Zach Jones in motion. He moves to the left side of the offensive line. They hand it off to Brandon Madison, who's powering forward. And Brandon Madison moves the James for the Greyhounds. First down and 10 coming up. Seven-yard gain. Information thanks to the fantastic PA announcer Dan Christian here at Gilman School. He's a veteran, Julian. He is. He is the best of the best. I don't consider myself worthy to be in his presence. <laughs> he, is, he is fantastic, really. He's great, and I mean that. He is really fantastic. All right. Back to the game, Joey, and you can talk <laughs> as much as you want about Dan Christian afterwards. Brunel Hill keeps the ball, and he will fire this one completed to the near side. A great catch there. Looked like that was the fullback, Bryce Bush. I believe Bryce Bush is a uh, multi-sport athlete. I think he plays baseball as well, Nathan. Does he not? He's a catcher. Perhaps Bryce Bush, Mac confirmed and I. Yes, he he is a uh, is a catcher on that uh, Greyhound varsity baseball team that made it to the championship game. I don't, did he, he didn't start, did he? He did not start, but he was yeah, on that he team. He was on the team. Okay, I didn't I didn't recall. I, I remember playing with him JV a few years back. He's a great player. He's really physical. A handoff strong. to Zach Jones on the far side, and he's getting swarmed and taken down in the backfield. So oh, Gilman's going to face a third down, down and long. And that's a situation where good counsel just read that play perfectly and they were able to get off the blocks as I think we have another injured Falcon. Yeah, it looks like he's grabbing his foot, indicating a foot injury and uh, taking off the helmet. The training staff will look at him. Hopefully he's nothing too serious. Uh, I think he might just be cramping up. Yeah, it really does look like a cramp. They're, they're stretching that, uh, that hamstring. So thank you everybody for tuning into Greyhound TV here today. I'm Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein with Mac Webster below us. You can't see him, but you can certainly hear him. Just had a shot. And then, of Hello. course, our uh, our valued executive producer, producer John Ball. Uh, jack of all trades, I like to call him, even though his name is John. But we do have a Jack, Jack John. Olson. And jack, that, of jack course, Olson is not the Jack of all trades. He's uh, also a John. I think he's technically... Is he all, John he, Olson? He's technically John jack, Olson. John, Jack, whatever. But uh, then we, of course, have a niche suit on the camera. John and John working down below. Yes. And uh, Rhett.
Brett Dawson, of course, on the field level camera, and Cole Vincent stepped in to help us out earlier today, and he also provided the research for today's game. So thank you to everybody that is part of the Greyhound TV community, as well as Cesare Kikanti, our faculty advisor, who does so much. Everybody goes into making this mm -hmm. as good as it can be. And, of course, the viewers. Thank you to you, because without you, what would we be? We would just be talking to no one, Julian, and see what we'd be doing. And that would be depressing. That would be very I can depressing. go home later and do that. Of course. But I'd I do that to myself all night. I'd just talk <laughs> to myself for hours and hours. Because I like to hear my own voice, Julian. That's so right. It all goes into my ego. Of course. This Grey on TV, this is all about egotism, as we've so often pointed out. So now 10.35 on the clock in the fourth quarter. Purnell Hill lined up okay. third down and 14. A huge situation for the Greyhounds if they can pick this up. Man in motion is Zach Jones. They will fake the handoff. Purnell Hill... Off his back foot, he throws incomplete to Brandon Madison. A pass intended for number three, Brandon Madison. And now it's fourth down and 14 with 10.23 to go in the fourth quarter. I mean, to, to put it as simply as I can, that's certainly not what you want. Oh, uh, no, yeah, <laughs> definitely not uh, the play call that you were looking for there. You try to catch him, catch him napping on that screen pass. You're trying to get the defenders way too aggressive there. I like the call. The execution was not there. Oh, my goodness. Are they going for it? Well, it certainly looks like it, Julian. It does look like it. Fourth down in 14. They're going to take the snap and roll out. Purnell Hill stepping up in the pocket. He's going to shovel it forward incomplete. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's uh, – if you're just following the track of the game, you don't feel comf comfortable trying for those fourth and longs. They haven't been able to pass with much success long. The offense line has been getting uh, ripped up pretty bad. He hasn't had much time in the pocket. And here's what I don't understand, Nathan. They have their punter in Drew Ehrlich that's been put in situations where his high punts have not been a good good uh, outcome for Gilman. Mm -hmm. They're in a situation here where a high punt would be great. Yeah. They would be able to pin good counsel inside their own 20-yard line. I don't understand the call. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, that's why we're up in the booth, Joey. So we have to remain objective. Not, and Gilman may be our team, but I, I'm not sure I understand well, it. Well, yeah, they're not paying us anything to, you know, make these kind of calls out there, Joey. They have confidence <laughs> that's right. in him. He's, he's the man. So, um, you know. If he, if he thinks that's the right call, if he would have made that the play, Julian, we wouldn't be up here uh, criticizing it. So it's a give and take kind of situation. It was a risk either way, but now on the field is the, the quarterback for good counsel, number 12, Travis Nannan. The receiver on the near side is number 19, Joey Felton. Gilman crowd uh, really amping it up over there. They're packed in there pretty tight. Uh, there's a lot of guys. Uh, on their st on their uh, feet, cheering loudly. James Cole is, of course, losing his mind out there. Matt Tomaselli is losing his voice, and the uh, guys are trying to get their team pumped up for this game. So here we go. The handoff up the middle, and Ibrahim will be stuffed. And just a quick scoring update for you. Uh, of course, this happened last night, but we'll tell you anyway. Number one, McDonough getting knocked off last night to DeMatha, 49-28. to So that's big. Good counsel if they're able to walk away with this win today. Maybe the new number one, but Gilman's trying to say, hey, you know what, you got to get through us first, and we're trying to move our way into the ranks. Oh, uh, yeah. Gilman, of course, uh, a team that's always been up there, and everyone's been uh, kind of downing them after the loss of their head coach, Biff Poggi, but they've been playing phenomenal so far. The pass out to Joey Felton is incomplete, well over his head. Waited if he was a little bit, uh, I guess, had been more aware, might have been able to pick that ball. That's asking a lot out of the cornerback. But he he was there, and that certainly would have been a deflating play. The pick six in this situation would have put the situation in greatly in Gilman's favor. Third down and 13, and Mac, they're lining up Sladzinski close to the D line. Maybe he'll come on a blitz. We saw him do that against Dunbar. He's, he, he is a ferocious, ferocious animal out there. Travis Nannan in the shotgun. He takes the snap back to pass, looking for an option. He's lobbing it deep into double coverage, oh. and it's incomplete. Almost intercepted by Gilman. No flags on the play. Great defense, and they'll be forced to punt unless they're feeling like uh, Gilman and saying, hey, fourth down and 13, let's go for it. Hey, fourth down and 13 is the new uh, fourth and one, Julian. It seems like it's the new first and 10, Nathan. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... I get the pick would have basically been a punt anyways, and maybe they were able to return more yards on the punt, so maybe it was just a, a strategical drop there. Maybe. Maybe that was all intentional. That was all, uh, this is above our pay grade, Nathan. Yeah, he, he seemed all disappointed about not catching that, but uh, perhaps that was merely just a uh, him flaunting, uh, you know, using his acting skills out there. 9.34 in the fourth quarter. Slow snap, and this one, somebody may have gotten a hand on that as it goes down towards the 30-yard line to let it bounce down to the 20 and that's where it will be down maybe at the 19 with that win it might push it even further Julian perhaps 
Piper Bond was indicating that that ball was tipped. That's why he did not go to try and uh, catch it, afraid, uh, afraid to bobble it. With uh, 9.20 left in the fourth quarter, the Hounds are really going to try, uh, try and get some points on the board as they're not going to have many more chances. So here we go. First down and 10. Lined up on the near side is the receiver Zach Jones under center is Pernell Hill. Behind him is Brandon Madison. He'll be back to pass from the Going single deep. back. He's going to lob it to the far side incomplete. Well out of bounds. And Nathan, it's better to overthrow than underthrow. Exactly, because if you underthrow it, it could get picked off. But the overthrow, at least, it's only your guy is going to make the catch. So Pernell putting a great ball on it there. He can't ask for much more out of the quarterback. Uh, looked like a bit of a passing interference call there that they might have missed. Uh, certainly, at least from our view, it looked like there was a little bit of shoving yeah, going on. For number nine, Watson, 17 to 10 is your score. Second down and 10, the situation. Purnell Hill lined up in the shotgun. He's got a back to his right as uh, his back goes over to move a man to the line. You don't see that every day. Heads up oh, that may have been a false start, but it wasn't called on Piper Bond as keeping the balls. Purnell Hill, Purnell Hill running up the middle, yeah. and Hill is taken down after a gain of maybe three or four yards. Most certainly a false start, but they completely missed that call. He shook. They pointed to him. Um, hey, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a hard job being a ref these days, Julian. You get a lot of criticism. You got to be 100% perfect, and they weren't that time. That it is. And certainly we're fortunate for that. That was Piper Bond on what should have been a false start. But, Mac, when Piper Bond is, uh, is on his game, he's a fantastic asset in the slot. Yes, he is. He's very quick and has really, really good hands. So now it's third down and five, a huge convergent situation for the Greyhounds as they've got a, a back to the left of Purnell Hill. Back to passes Hill, looking for an option. And this one will be incomplete, an underthrow for Thomas Booker as immediately Purnell Hill was under pressure. And I think they'll punt here. Yeah, so it was a good job by number eight, the outside linebacker, reaching over and getting his hand on it uh, to knock that ball away. It was a tough throw. Uh, Booker would have had to make it a little bit of run after catch. But now we're seeing the Gillen punting team now come out there join. Drew looks high punts. So maybe this one can a uh, little bit more far than high this time as what Gilman is hoping. You'd hope so, certainly from a Gilman standpoint. But Gilman, now that the time will start to become an issue over the next few minutes, it's 8.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Gilman's trailing by a touchdown. Their defense, I hate to say, well, actually, I'm glad to say, but for the Gilman offense, perhaps it's bittersweet. Their defense has given them opportunities. Mm -hmm. They need to start taking advantage. And time, Jordan, keeps on ticking into the future. And... This ball is taken and fielded and returned down to the 50-yard line and getting past oh, Gilman free. defenders. Oh, my goodness. Down the far side and inside the 20-yard line. Good counsel's got great field oh, position, but, but a, flag a flag is out. A, play. a flag is out. Let's see if it brings it back. Seven, Side note, that special teams for good counsel has been nothing short of terrific this game. They've given their team so many opportunities, and Gilman just can't seem to wrap those guys up. And Nathan, I can't let this slide because of our our, our tradition of 80s song references. You said time keeps on ticking, 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 ticking say, into the future. Uh, fly like an eagle, Steve Miller man, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. All right. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, thank Test you, thank you. there, you. man. I didn't think you picked that up. No, I, it, it, like, I, it, I thought, thought about it. You molded it over for a bit? I heard you say it, and then it... it, it maybe lit a light in my brain yeah. and then I thought about it I'm like wait a minute yeah. time keeps on ticking yeah, 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 try yeah. to slow that one by you 8.18 yeah. to go you're tough to crack there I, I, I caught that one maybe we're just going to have to keep testing each other until someone again. someone can't figure it out you might get me with some obscure one maybe the maybe uh, something something yeah. I'll find it maybe some not, not, like maybe late 80s song I don't know I'm, I'm pretty solid but uh uh, if you could, you could maybe stop me. So back to football. Good counsel is going to be brought out of the red zone here. Sorry. They are at the uh, the 34 yard line of Gilman in the I formation. Nannan hands off to his running back and breaking tackles is uh, number 31, Makai Smith. Mackay Smith. A flag on the play. The flag down. Let's holding. hope this is holding. I yeah. Good there you Slippery go. Slippery running the entire time by these running backs. They've been near impossible to bring down and. Gilman's one of their big things they're going to address after this game is their inability to tackle in the open field. So good counsel. They keep backing it up here. 
I think that was a holding call. It was indeed. First down and 20. With 8-10 to go in the fourth quarter. They line up in the I formation because what else would they do? Seems like they've done that all day on first down. And they'll hand it off to the fullback. And he will be swarmed and taken down. They've been taking advantage of Gillen running his zone over there. The cornerback uh, is just kind of hanging out to that right side. They have two guys to the left. They're kind of overloading uh, Gilman and making them uncomfortable in how they like to run their defense. So uh, good job, good counsel, kind of keeping Gilman uh, not at ease and, and sort of uncomfortable in their own uh, their normal set that they go to. Second down and 22. It's not what you want, Julian. Very difficult. I don't know what the percentage of getting a first down on second and 22, but it is not a high one. Travis Nannan with a man to his left. He's going to roll a little bit, looking for an option. He bullets this one to a wide open receiver, and he's going to get around Gilman defenders. Number 10 on the reception. That is Jonathan Donnelly. I should have been my time, Julian. Should have been my time there. <sighs> Maybe so, Nathan. As they're nearing the red zone here, this could be fatal for Gilman if they don't get a big play to turn things around. If they run another couple minutes off the clock and kick this field goal, I'd say that's nearly a dagger, Julian. Let's hope for Gilman's sake that they're not successful in those efforts. But it's been a close game all game, and uh, Gilman's fought very, very hard. And, uh, you know, even now it's not really certain for anything. Good counsel lined up in the single back formation. They'll pitch it out to their running back, number 31, who's getting around Gilman defenders and down the sideline able to pick up some good yardage. Number 31 there, Makai Smith. And that was all defensive end play right there. Um, not doing his assignment, letting him get outside of him. On those sweep plays, the defensive end has to force them inside. Uh, and just a good job by the blocking of a good counsel and a, and a poor job by the defensive end for Gilman. Second down and one coming up. 6.35 on the clock. Things are getting a little bit grim here at Gilman. Line up of the I formation. Nannan hands off and he will be swarmed in the backfield. Great play there by Gilman's defensive front. So, third down and short coming up. This is a big play for the Greyhound defense trying to force a field goal. Third down and four is what good counsel faces. Of course, I like to remind everybody that field goals are not given in high school. The wind is blowing a little bit. It's a, it can throw guys off. You know, you hope to hold good counsel to a field goal here and just hope that Gilman can, can well, Gilman either can block it or, of course, good counsel can maybe miss it. And it'd be interesting to see if they try to ice the kicker here. You don't see that much in high school ball. Uh, but, you know, just like in, in college, it's not it's not a given. As in the, the pros, this would be a chip shot. But for high schoolers, this is about almost like 40, 60, 30, 70 territory right there. So it's, it's no guarantee. Uh, and Gilman's going to at least try to get back there and contest it with a block. So with 5.49 to go here in the fourth quarter, I'm Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein and Mac Webster on the call for you here today. I'd like to remind everybody that John Ball is, I mean, he's the master of this broadcast. He, he's, he's the glue that holds it all together. He's down there as the executive producer, uh, accompanied by Anish Sood on the camera, as well as Rhett Dawson on our field level mm -hmm. camera, Cole Vincent, and of course, um, we have Cole Vincent who did the scoreboard earlier, and then um, we have Jack Olson on the scoreboard now. And if you're not doing anything after this game, you can certainly stop by the Station North and the Historic Center Theater after work on Thursday. I guess Thursday, I guess not today. September 29th, uh, 5.30 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Go out and uh, enjoy, enjoy some historical Baltimore centers right there, Julian. Seems like a fun afternoon. Nannan hands off up the middle, and it looks like Ibrahim uh, is spinning uh -huh. away, and he's got a touchdown. What a play by Mohamed Ibrahim. As he looks like he may be injured in the end zone. Touchdown, good counsel. Uh-oh. This does not look good for good counsel. You hate to see that. A guy scores a touchdown that after the play. If anything, it shows a tremendous amount of heart if he got hurt during the play. Uh, and then mile, goes mile. down. Um, but now Gilman's down two touchdowns with five minutes left. What do you uh, do? It's looking more impractical by the minute. The play call is going to become predictable. They have to pass the ball. They can't just run it down and get in field position. Uh, so this is not the situation Gilman wants to be in, Julian. And... Uh, I guess their, their only hope right now is a quick score, a quick stop, and then another pretty relatively quick score. Well, if Gilman does do anything miraculous, we'll be here to bring it to you. It's 23 to 10, and an extra point will make it 24 to 10 as they're attending to Mohamed Ibrahim on the sideline. 
Uh, so Gilman, of course, Pernell Hill will need to be accurate in his passing. They will need to get receivers open. We haven't seen him take a lot of big shots today, Nathan. And I think that's something that they're going to have to turn to here, the passing game. You've got to take your chances through the air if you're going to want to win this game here today. Yeah, uh, they haven't stretched the ball with any success so far. They've tried little dick dunk screens. Uh, they, the deepest pass, I think, was the one they threw to Thomas uh, Booker in the end zone. For the touchdown, yes. For the touchdown, Great catch. Which is a phenomenal catch. Um, but, yeah, they have to hope that they maybe put on their speedy receivers, get the fastest guy in your receiving court to run a streak route, uh, maybe try to get uh, Thomas open over the middle or, or to the outside. Uh, he's a big threat guy. He's hard to, to cover because, you know, there's no one really in high school ball exactly that's going to be able to cover a guy his size and his speed. Uh, linebackers are going to be even too small. Yeah. And um, defensive backs are going to be hopeless if they're trying to catch him with the speed. So I think Gilman's right now, their best chance might be just to go through him and see what he can do going down the field. Perhaps as they are still attending to Muhammad Ibrahim on the sideline with 5.43 to go in the fourth quarter. They're, Gilman is going to need to uh, to spend their time wisely here. Mm -hmm. They're going to need very efficient drives yeah. with some very well-executed plays. They've only scored 10 points here today, and uh, they're going to need to score more than they've already scored to win this game here. Is it impossible? No. We're holding on to hope you here. You believe in miracles? Yes. yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. Thank you, Al Michaels. You're welcome. And, and the unfortunate thing is we just do not have uh, too much time on our hands. That is just for sure. Keeps taking, taking away. As we turn back to the field for the extra point attempt. The kick is up, and it is close to the upright. No good as it sailed past the, uh, the far upright, but on the wrong side of it. That could be interesting, Jordan, if uh, Gilman's able to produce a miraculous comeback. It's definitely open for them. So it is 23 to 10 now, as Gilman will assemble their uh, their return team. They know exactly what they need to do. They need to march down the field and score, <sighs> then an onside kick, and then march it down the field and score again. Hmm. Julian, I think you missed something. All right, and now we just reference. Yeah. Oh wait, wait a minute. Missed, I did. Yeah. Too much time on our hands. Oh, yikes. I didn't pick up too on that one. Too much time on our hands. I didn't pick up on that we one, We do not have too much. I, th did I, I mean, I didn't really stop you there, but I, I think I got you, you slipping. No, you, you, you I, may have. I filled it in so seamlessly. You may have. You, you really did. It didn't sound like an 80s reference. Oh. I think you were sort of like looking at me, expecting me to say something. Yeah. I was a little bit confused. I was like, what? Yeah, what's going on? Again? Okay, all right. Now too we're on the same page. Too much time on our hands. It just yeah. keeps ticking, ticking away. That it does. I'm sure, uh. Tim Holly has that on replay in his head right now as uh, this ball goes out of the end zone, but I think we're going to re-kick. Actually, it looks like it was an offside yeah. on uh, good counsel. Yeah, we're re-kicking. Means that uh, the uh, players on good counsel were in front of the football before it was kicked. Very rarely do you see that one. So just a quick college football update for all of you. Number nine, Wisconsin defeats Georgia State 23-17 to after trailing in the fourth quarter. Yep. And um, actually, number 13, Iowa, was upset by an FCS school, North Dakota State, oh on my. a game-expiring game, game expiring field goal. Wow. The alma mater of the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz defeating, uh, defeating a top 25 school here today. But let's hope for the even bigger upset today, Gilman versus Good Counsel. Would it be? I would say so. You say so? In right. my life, yes. Okay. It's I'm more, not an Iowa fan. It's definitely more important for us, I'd say, but yes. yeah. oh. how much a bigger upset it would be. This ball is shanked to the side, Let it go. and it's going to go out of bounds, so Gilman's going to get the ball to the 40-yard line. Or what are they going to do here? They no. didn't throw a flag. Throws the flag, so I believe the Gilman Grants will get the ball at the 40-yard line. Um, I know that's the rule in college football. Yes, and, and in and the pros. The pros so. Yeah. Fantastic field position. Uh, starting off with, if they needed, uh, they needed that certainly, and now they have a better shot at coming back with a roughly six minutes left, 5:43 left on the clock. Um, there's definitely a chance that Gilman comes down, puts a point up, a touchdown up, and then comes back and, and gets a great stop to put them in position to win the game. So Nathan, if Gilman does indeed go four verts here, which I'm sure we'll see at some point, who do you put out there? Who are you, who's your personnel? Um, so I probably go with Zach Jones. He's a 
Uh, definitely one of the speeder guys. Wade Allister is incredibly fast, and he's physical, so I can see him going up for jump balls. Ayende ball. Watson's been reliable all game, and I think the other guy would be Thomas Booker. Uh, mismatch over the middle would be a great guy to hit, and uh, difficult for a safety to play him well. Yes, Thomas Booker, the sheer size of Thomas Booker would give him an advantage over anybody that he really faces. It doesn't look like anybody in the secondary is quite as big as Thomas Booker is, and he's just as physical as he is big. First down and 10. Not to mention incredibly fast for his size. And now the whistle blows. Not sure why, we'll find out. Interesting, uh, Thomas Booker's on the sideline for this play. They're probably trying to rest him up after his uh, series on defense. That's the disadvantage of playing both sides. You don't get the best out of him on either side, but you get a, a, him a lot more on time on the field. Correction, first and 10 from Gilman's 40-yard line. Guess the refs not knowing the uh, rules as well as we thought they did. They moved it to the 45. 5.43 to go here. In the fourth quarter, Purnell Hill will take the snap. He's under pressure, and he'll dump it off to Brandon Madison. Madison looking for room, and he's across the 50-yard line. Brandon Madison able to make something out of nothing there on the screen pass. That's so a second down and short coming up. Actually, it looks like they in the first down, which is why the, oh, wow. the clock I thought the clock the stops on the first. Oh, there it goes. But uh, yep. Yes, they did indeed give him the first down. Thank you very much, Mac. Oh, we have another good council player injured on the right near the Gilman bench. Drop him like flies. Oh, he looks fine. He got up under his own volition. He is uh, walking back to the sideline, jogging back to the sideline. He should be in good shape. He might come back in a few plays. But right so, now, Julian, I, the question is, do you go with a, um, a hurry-up offense? I don't know if Gilman's put that in yet. But if they have, do you try to speed up the tempo right now with only 528 and two score deficit? Do you think it's it's now, or do you still stay comfortable running your plays and, and you know let kind of time come to you and hope you get a quick stop? I think you need to execute well, but the sense of urgency should certainly be there. You should not be leisurely running the ball or making quick passes, short passes. Purnell Hill, Purnell Hill needs to air it out, as he does right there to Brandon Willis, oh. who stays in bounds. Brandon Willis fighting for extra yardage as he gets down to the 35-yard line. Brandon Willis showing that not only is he fast, but he's smart. Yes, well, that, that almost reminds me of the uh, Terrence Williams catch where he chose not to go out, out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Back in, where he could have gone out of bounds. You now, at times, not necessarily as much of a factor as it was then. It was a similar situation, but um, I, the question is, are those five yards worth uh, about 20 seconds? Yes, that was my, very much like that, uh, that Terrence Williams play. Uh, but there, that may have been better for Gilman than it was for the Dallas Cowboys. As Purnell Hill looking for an option, he's oh. going to air this one out deep to the he's end open. zone. He's open! He's got, he's got it! Got it. Touchdown. touchdown! Allende Watson with the touchdown. What a throw from Purnell Hill. Right on the money, a lob to the end zone. Right over every head of the good council defenders. That was superb Phen through the air by Purnell Hill. Phenomenal catch by Brandon Madison. Phenomenal. It's one of those oh, that was Brandon Madison on the catch, I believe. That was yes. one of those plays when you uh, you know, you know sit back in the pocket and you just wait for someone to get open, and he just sprints open deep out of nowhere. Purnell, beautiful ball placement and a touchdown grab. Gilman's back in this game, Julian, and with a lot of life. And we have confirmation that that was indeed Brandon Madison on the catch, not Ian Day Watson. Our apologies. Still a fantastic catch there in the end zone. This one is up and good. So Gilman now trails by less than a touchdown. This is big, Nathan. It looks like the Gilman student section caught that ball, and they're taking it as a souvenir. Matt Katz with the catch in the back of the end zone. They're not going to return that ball. I wonder, I wonder whether the Hounds are going to go for an onside kick here. There's still four minutes and 45 seconds left. You know, I, I wouldn't if I was the coaching staff. I'd have confidence in this defense. You don't want to give them good field position and set up a field goal. I think the smart move is to kick it deep. Uh, try to get a three and out, uh, maybe maybe allow one or two first downs. We might still have enough time uh, with about you know a minute left to go down and score for the win. But Gilman, obviously, Julian, within striking distance. They within are. Within striking distance. And Nathan, I agree with you there. I think that you can trust your defense to do something here. You don't need to do anything too brash. You want to trust both sides of the ball here. You don't need to kick an onside kick. Would it be aggressive? Yes. Would it be pressing your luck? Yes. But is it necessary? Absolutely not as the Gilman kicking team is coming on here with 4.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Great pass from Purnell Hill to Brandon Madison in the end zone. That was unbelievable. Now here's a question. What is the kick return team doing? They have everyone bunched up in the middle there. 
I think an onside perhaps to the. Oh, they might be pretending, or they might be waiting for the guys to break out. Yeah. So now they do. The fake. That was an interesting play decision there. So Adaro Mandala gets set for the kickoff. Steps up to the ball, and he lets her rip. It's a line drive kick to about the 10 yard line, fielded by good counsel across the 20 yard line. Trying to find some room, and he's tripped up, thankfully, inside the 30 yard line at about the 25. So the fake onside, interesting play call. I love it, though, because it gets those guys nervous about it and doesn't have their minds focused on the block. They're concerned about perhaps jumping on the ball. Uh, you get guys slightly out of position, and Gilman with a, finally a stop back deep, not letting the kick return break off a huge play like he's been doing almost all game, Julian. So now Gilman has ample time to stop good counsel. When you really put it in the grand scheme of things, this Gilman defense has done a superb job stopping the Falcons' offense today. And they need to do it once more. The handoff to Mohamed Ibrahim down the near side, trying to find room. Good blocking as he will pick up the first down and perhaps a little bit more. And they didn't call him out of bounds there. I guess does the clock run if he pushed out of bounds? Uh, I'm not sure. You may have to be inside the two-minute warning in high school. Well, no, it, it was a first down, so the clock stops no matter what. And uh, here oh. it goes, punt and gone. Okay, thank you very much, Mac. Webster, always uh, willing and able to correct us when we slip up. 417 and counting. First down and 10. Travis Nannan, line up in the I formation under center. And he will take the snap and he'll hand it off to Mohamed Ibrahim. And he will be taken down after a gain of about two yards. Julian, he is so difficult to wrap up. He is shifty, he's running powerful. I've already talked him up so far this broadcast. It's, it's so hard though. To we got not another, another man down for good count. Oh, goodness. Gilman actually catches a break there. It's a, a timeout basically used for good counsel to stop the clock. Yeah, so many injuries on this Falcons team here today, and we certainly hope that he is all right. Yeah, you don't like to see it, especially at the high school level, a bunch of guys going down. You know, it's always um, sad to see, especially if they're serious. The injuries haven't been too bad, thankfully. Uh, guys have taken a couple plays off, taken the rest of the drive off, and then come back um, mm -hmm. and gotten right back in the swing of things. Uh, and Gilman coming back and getting into the swing of things at the start of the second half was a little bit shaky, but as the third quarter wind down, they were finally able to put themselves in a position to come back to win this game. Now as the fourth quarter has reached um, that this midway point, perhaps uh, you know we're getting close to that two-minute warning. Uh, and again, as we've been stressing this entire time, defense needs to step up, and that starts with the front four. The defensive line needs to hold their ground and um, really shut down that running attack early before it's able to pick up momentum. Absolutely, as we have 3.51 to go in the fourth quarter, and Gilman trails good counsel by less than a touchdown. It's a six-point game, 23-17. to And Nathan, I have to say that this game is going to rely on, one, the Gilman defense providing a stop for the offense, and two, Pernell Hill and his pinpoint passing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fall on his shoulders. That's how the game's uh, probably going to end up. It's going to be him back in the pocket. It's going to be Thomas Booker. Um, at the tight end spot, it's going to be um, the usual receiving core. It's going to be Brandon Madison. Uh, they have to produce when they get the ball back. There is no waiting till the next drive. As soon as they get the ball, as soon as the defense makes the stop, they're going to have one, maybe two drives left, two if they're really, really fortunate and the defense makes another stop. Mm -hmm. uh, with 351, it doesn't seem likely, but perhaps. Uh, but when Gillen gets the ball back, they have to think that this is their last chance of putting points on the board, last chance to win the game. They can't let the heat of the moment uh, mess them up too. You caught it, I didn't caught it right you? away. You caught it, he great. It. I love it. Yes. That was great. You thought you could throw that one by <laughs> me. Oh, come on. You know, oh. you know me better than that. Oh, that's great. The heat of the moment, baby. That's great stuff. The heat of the moment. But like I was saying, you can't let the heat of the moment uh, disrupt your focus. And then Pernell Hill certainly needs to stay calm, cool, and collected if he gets an opportunity here to come out and maybe get a go-ahead touchdown. Is on the carry is Makai Smith. Great stop. And he will be stuffed up. Third down coming up for good counsel. This is crucial, Nathan. Yes, and Julian, you know, I just it just hurts me so much to compliment you, but that was so well done, the heat of the moment reference. <laughs> oh, beautifully placed. I, there's, no other, there's no other time. I think that's by Asia. I think yeah. it's the band. I can the say continent? for sure. No, no, no. The, the whole continent the whole came together. Continent. No, yeah, the, uh, the the band, the yeah. band Asia. I I may or may not be right about that one. If I'm wrong, then feel free to tweet no, at Greyhound tweet at Greyhound, under, Greyhound underscore TV. If you want to tweet at us and correct me, feel free. This is a huge situation, and uh, they pass to the receiver who's diving. Does he have the ball? Okay. I, it's completed, and that's a first down. Yeah, I think you have to give that to him. Though it's pretty, it's close. 
and that's very that close. Hurts He's got Gilman the first down. so much because yeah. that was a third down, and that would have made a fourth down a punt. And now you might have to start using your timeouts. Yeah, they're certainly going to need to start doing that. Travis Nannan did a great job of bulleting that pass right into the hands of number 10, Jonathan Donnelly, who slid down there and made the catch. That was fantastic. So now lined up under center. I imagine they're going to run here, even though they have a lot of players spread out. Yeah, they, you're right about that, Nathan, as they pitch this one over to Makai Smith, who's stuffed in the backfield with 2.35 on the clock in the fourth quarter. This is really a huge situation for this Gilman defense. This is where you prove that you are an elite defensive unit. Gilman's going to start having to use their timeout soon as we're winding inside of two minutes at 2.20 to go on the clock. But this is really where you need to make your stand, Nathan. This is where you prove to everybody here and watching on Greyhound TV that you mean business. Yeah, here, what I don't understand is I, I guess they don't have enough time left. They, to call, you should probably call the timeout right before because it's going to be a two-minute warning. They're, they, they're going to let it wind a little bit. I'm not sure if there is a uh, – okay, here we go. So there is that two-minute warning there. Yeah. As a second down and 12, I'm not sure Why I understand it either. Out? You know, sometimes, Nathan, I think that, that some coaches like to, to play with their timeouts when they have less time versus preserve time yeah, with their the timeouts ball. before the time is expired. I, I, I think the smartest play there would have been to call a timeout right before that, the, the, after, right after the play ended. The next play would have run down, okay, and that two-minute warning would have came out, and you would have had two plays, it would have been a third down. There actually is no yeah, two-minute warning in uh, high school football. Okay, that, that was, was a delay of game penalty on good counsel. And I think the reason that Coach Holly hasn't used his timeouts yet is he's waiting to see uh, whether good counsel gains yardage here um, and uh, make it necessary for a stop. Thank you very much, Mac. You're, Always you're, correcting me, Mac. Yeah, you're completely right. I was wondering that same thing, but when the clock stopped, I thought to myself, oh, okay, well, uh, I guess there is a two-minute warning, well, but apparently not. Now there was, nope, now, there was a little clock malfunction there. They put 20 seconds yeah, on the clock. Yeah, for a second there was, no, it was 20 minutes, actually. Oh, that was 20. Us plenty of time to come. <laughs> I guess so. It looked more to me like 20 seconds. I wasn't There's, sure what happened there. In the column of Travis Nannan on a draw play, uh -oh. hands off to uh -oh. Makai Smith. Uh-oh is right, as he's getting by this Gilman defense, and he's taken down just short of the first down marker, maybe four or three yards to go. This is uh, put up or shot off time, Joey. There's no other chance. The first down will basically end it. Third down and two, timeout Gilman. This is the game. Yes, timeout called by Gilman. Third down and two. If you're at home watching this game, it's time to... I don't know. Whatever it is you do, do but something superstitious. Yes. L if you're wearing, cap. If, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you do. Uh, Put the shirt on inside out. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's that's one of those things you can do. Lucky rabbit foot. Exactly. Um, let's see. What else? Get on your hands and knees and pray. <laughs> that may be even better, actually, because yeah. uh, we certainly need some divine info. Yes. Well, maybe not actually. We have trust in this Gilman team. We have faith I, in this I do, Gilman but team. You know, Julian, I think at, at you know at any level, at every level, you have to try whatever you can, Julian. And that means praying to whatever god it is you worship. Praying to the football gods. Praying to the football gods. The gods that we all worship here. John Madden. Greyhound TV. Yes, John Madden up there. Well, actually, John Madden's still living, but he can hear our calls, <laughs> Nathan. He can hear our calls. <laughs> He was dead. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I thought, <laughs> thought you. Thought I thought you dead? thought he. You, I guess the way I said it probably made it sound. Yeah. Less. How about um? Let's see. He's still living. Um, Raiders owner just win baby. Um, oh, Al Davis. Al Davis. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Brain malfunction there. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that if we were praying to him, he may pack up this Gilman team and move them to Los Angeles. Yep. Oh. But uh. Did it. <laughs> Nice. But uh, I think that we're just going to need to hope the Gilman team can do their own work here. Third down and two, 149 to go. Travis Nannan under center with three wide receivers on the far side. They hand over the middle Nothing. and Gilman stops Nothing. them. And a timeout is called immediately, I think. Let's see. They should. They're not. I guess they don't have any more timeouts left. Oh, that is a very bad situation. They don't. Oh, no, they do have the number of timeouts on the scoreboard. Yes, they're out of timeouts. The clock will continue to run. And then whatever it is they use it on, I'm sure it wasn't uh, worth it. It's Would right you now. be surprised if good counsel went for it? I wouldn't. Um, that was tough. Um, Fourth down and three. I, I'd push him back in their own end zone. I'd, I'd punt it. I don't think there's any, there's any point in risking it. Now we have a stoppage of play. I thought uh, good counsel might wait for the clock to die all the way down to get a delay out. of game and then, be able, and then to, punt it. be able to hit a bigger punt. Yep, smart move. I like it. 1-1-1. One, one, John one. Yes, 1-1-1. One, one, one. One eleven left on the clock here in the fourth quarter in this game. And Gilman is trailing six points. 
Nathan, they need to get the ball back, and they need to let per, per, excuse me, Pernell Hill work his magic. Yes, uh, and it's all going to rest on his shoulders. It's all going to be in the passing game. Uh, if you've been holding anything back right now, is the time to use it. You have to go through the air, and the defense is going to know that. Uh, comeback routes, uh, post routes, something that's going to get you to the sideline uh, and still pick up a number of yards, what you're going to go to. Uh, attacking the middle of the field is not going to be um, – what you want to do, um, and the, the other team's going to be suspecting the pass, so you just kind of hope your receivers uh, have been practicing their route running drills really well, and they're going to get open, uh, make the catch, and get out of bounds quickly. And now you hope that Terrence Williams' incident does not happen. That's right. Uh, however, we do not need a field goal, so I, I assume if the clock was expiring, you know, you'd, you'd just kind of let it go. Fourth down and three. Looks like they're going to punt the ball. They're doing uh, They're doing what you said, Nathan. They're making the smart choice. No offsides penalty for Gilman. You cannot jump offsides. This would kill it. That would be horrible. But they are stacking the line here. Nothing stupid here. Nobody back deep to return. They'll take the snap. They'll try to get to it, but it's a high punt. And hopefully it'll go into the end zone. Oh, and it takes a good council bounce. Beautiful and down point. inside the 10-yard line. So 1.03 to go. This is the moment of truth, the minute of truth, rather, Nathan, with yes. about a minute left on the clock. You got a minute to win it, Julian. That's right. That's all you got. And right now, Gilman's going to be relying on that offensive line to hold steady. They've been shaky kind of most of the game. It's been tough tough going for them. They have been, Purnell's been under pressure a lot of the time, but right now it's time to put up or shut up. You can see the coaches on the Gilman side all a little bit nervous, but certainly confident in this offensive unit to make a big play. Line up on the near side is Brandon Willis, number four. He's the receiver. And then in the slot, we have Piper Bond, the junior. Four wide out set with a backfield consisting of Purnell Hill and Brandon Madison. Back to pass is Purnell Hill. He's looking over the middle. And Piper oh, Bond, he what went a catch. up and he got it. What Heck a great, what a great catch Get back by to line. Purnell. Excuse me, great catch by Piper Bond. And now here they go. Clock won't start until the chains are set, ladies and gentlemen. 57 seconds left to go. Purnell Hill, he's looking for a stoppage here. He's looking for the sign from his sideline. The clock, 50 now, seconds. clock starts up again. Moving into the shotgun is Purnell Hill. He's got three wide receivers on the near side. Clapping, waiting for the snap. Waiting for it. It's not coming. Now he's got it. And now we have a stoppage. Uh, Looks like a false start. start on Gilman. On the play. Illegal procedure against Gilman. Forty-six seconds and the clock is winding. Purnell Hill in the shotgun. A man to his right. Hike Four it. wideouts. Gotta hike the ball here. They do. Hill under pressure. He gets he hit hard. Hits. Hurry up now. You gotta spike it. You gotta spike it quickly. No timeouts. Twenty-five seconds. Spike the ball. This really hurts. Twenty seconds now. Spike it. There you go. So I think they're going to need to put maybe a second back on the clock there as they let it run a little bit too long. And now that's exactly what Gilman didn't want after a great catch by Piper over the middle to start off that drive. The delay or the false start. Yeah. And then now the sack. That is a punch right in the mouth. That is really killer right um, there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's drive killing. Now with 19 seconds, Julian, this is the game. Can we see the old hook and ladder? Maybe. Who knows what's up the sleeve of head coach Tim Holly? Purnell Hill stepping up, looking for an option. He's going to lob this one deep downfield. Incomplete. Fell in front of his intended receiver, Brandon Willis. But now, out of the reach of the defensive back to try and intercept it. 13 seconds left. It is fourth down and forever. And you know what that means, Nathan. We're living on a prayer, Julian. That's right. Thank you, Bon Jovi. You're welcome. As uh, we're going to have to see some pitches here and uh, maybe just hoping for a miracle as Gilman's going to try and get this ball to somebody and they're just going to try and lateral, lateral, lateral. That's the name of the game here, Nathan. Yep. And there's only a few plays you have for this situation. Let's see if they have one of them. Purnell Hill takes the snap. He's got to get rid of it, and he does, and he's going to fire this one. Intercepted, and the game is over. Intercepted by Anthony Bud. Oh, fumble. oh there's it. a fumble out, no. but no. That's going to be the end of the game here. Well, one second left. The interception by number six, Anthony Bud. And that will end Gilman's hopes here today as the crowd will start unraveling and everybody's going to head home and, and sorely disappointed as the clock hits zero here at Gilman School. And all, all you Gilman fans out there, that's a, 
It's a tough one. Yeah, that's it's a tough pill to swallow. <sighs> well, Julian, there's always next week. <laughs> that is true. Week. Let's talk a little bit about next week. So next week is going to be the first ever out of state broadcast by Greyhound TV. Us, you, me, and a few other guys, we're going to be headed up to Malvern, Pennsylvania. Actually, I'm going to be driving, Nathan. We don't get the luxury of a van. We're going to be headed up to Malvern, Pennsylvania, where Gilman's going to take on Malvern Prep, and uh, that's going to be a huge game. We're going to have that for you live on Greyhound TV. That is next Friday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock. Be sure to tune in. A lot of work goes into broadcasts like that, all of them, in fact. That one's going to nick something a little bit extra, so please tune in. We'd be glad to have you along board for that one. And uh, as the teams are shaking hands here, or uh, rather just high-fiving here at the, uh, the middle of the field, I am Julian Barron alongside Nathan Heinlein, Mac Webster, all of our producers, John Ball, Anish Sood, Jack Olson, Rhett Dawson, and of course, Cesare Kikanti, our faculty advisor. Thank you so much to everybody for tuning in here today. Good counsel walks away with the win, 23-17. to 17. For everybody here at Greyhound TV, thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you next week when we're in Pennsylvania, north of the border. And uh, that is all for us here today. Thank you so much. Sayonara. <laughs>